All right. Well, I was hoping Paul would make it in in time. And the only thing we see from Chris Taylor is his Michigan thing. He said something about watching football or otherwise. So I appreciate everybody taking time out of their busy, uh, you know, time on the weekend to kind of stop in and see this first opportunity for us to do a webinar. I'm hoping this is the first of many. Um, I appreciate Jim. He actually invested uh, a good amount of money to kind of put this together. But he thought, uh, from what he told me the other day, that it was a great opportunity to kind of get the word out on the hobby. And he thought that was a, a, it was worth every penny he invested in. So Jim, much appreciated. So what I'll do is I'll start this, I'll share this PowerPoint that Jim and I kind of put together. We'll kind of talk through it. I'll be the moderator. I'll ask Jim questions. And then he's going to give us his wealth of knowledge on box related items. So don't build me up too much, Keith. Don't don't fill you up too much. Don't build me up too much. Oh, okay. No. I'm just... Keep me a low bar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll do that. So let me uh, let me uh, uh, pull up my PowerPoint here, and then let me go to share screen. And well, I guess what I should do first is. Click that slide and then slide show from the beginning. Ah, I hate this. All right. So I'm going to do a uh, share screen and click on here, share, and then click on slide show. So, Jim, so I again appreciate you. Uh, taking the time out of uh, out of your uh, busy days to uh, talk to us about Bach beer. So let's uh, let's start off with the, the real deal. What's what's the story behind Bach beer? Where did Bach beer kind of get its name from? Well, there's a half a dozen different stories about that. I'm Bach Germany seems to be the area of Germany where Bach beer began. And of course, Bach is another German word for goat. So one of the one of the legends is that the mayor of Einbach invited the mayor of the neighboring town over to see whose beer was the best. And they both were drinking each other's beer and whoever stood up the longest was the winner. And the other mayor got pretty tipsy. The mayor of Einbach got pretty tipsy, but then a goat came out of nowhere and rammed the other mayor and knocked him off his feet. So the mayor of Einbach was the winner and they crowned the, the beer they were drinking from Einbach, Bach beer. Who the heck knows? <laughs> that's, that's obviously... But, the other thing that, that comes up a lot is that the monks couldn't eat during Lent, but they got to write the rules about what they could and couldn't do. So they drank liquid bread, which was a thick, malty, dark, heavy beer that either sustained them or got them to the point where they didn't give a care and uh, got them through Lent. And that was Bach beer. So obviously that's where the whole goat came thing came from, then, right? That's where the goat thing came from, and okay. that's that that's what to me makes Bach beer special is that linkage with a goat. Okay. The advertising for Bach beer is the most distinctive in the hobby, I think. And then it it, it seemed like it was historically around the first of May, and then it was like the first few weeks of May, but that's, yeah, that's no longer generally than from the first of March till about mid-April was opening day for Bach beer. So that corresponds with Lent season, Easter, and all that. But that's not so much the case anymore today, is it? Well, if you're in Texas, it's not. Yeah. Um, Shiner beer is available 24-7, 365. So, uh, I don't know. Yep. It's dark, it's sweet, it's malty. So I guess it's Bach beer. Okay. So yeah, so this this ad that I have here was actually one of the first ones I actually saw a goat in. I don't remember what city it was, but it was 1868. 
that actually had the goat in the advertisement. It was one of the first ones I could find where the goat was in the advertisement. So obviously uh, in 1868, the goat was already fairly noteworthy to, to include in the, in the ads that they had. So, so then there's this other one that I found that's, you can see the year on there. It says 1873. And I thought that it was a mistake or it was a fluke or some newspaper editor was just misspelling things. But I saw even in that time frame, frame in, in the late 1800s, there was mention of buck beer. So what, what's the story behind buck beer there, Jim? Your guess is as good as mine. But the one thing that I've always noticed about buck beer labels, I can't think of any that aren't from around the St. Louis area. So um, it, it, it could be associated with dialect of a group of Germans from a certain area of Germany that maybe they had the equivalent of a Southern drawl and buck beer sounded like Bach beer to them or vice versa. Yeah, so obviously they included the goat on there. Here's two labels, obviously, as Jim was saying from the St. Louis area. And it seemed like uh, Lent was pretty notorious to, to use it that way. And then here's two more bottle labels as well. This the one on the right, the, the, the brown and white one, obviously, was uh, a much later label. Um, and I think indications are that they use it, what, up, up to prohibition? I haven't seen any buck beer labels or any, any ads after prohibition. Okay. So... Obviously, they got sworn and didn't continue to use it. But so that's the story behind Buck Beer. And it could have been a marketing thing. You know, mark, the marketing department's two drink minimum anyway. So it could be that maybe they were using it to differentiate their beer from other people's Buck Beer. Yeah, that, that could have easily been the case. Yeah, maybe Buck Beer had a little more Buck in it. There you go. Yeah, so here's a couple of ads just from the late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, just from some of the different ones that were used. Uh, here's from a 1900 ad out of the Connecticut area. So obviously the goat became pretty notorious later on in ads as they were putting them in the late 1800s uh, to the to the early 1900s. So so Jim, so the next thing uh, kind of wanted to talk about was the Mary Boxsters. So I put here the first um newsletter cover page as well as what the first t-shirt looked like for the mary boxsters so it was a bcca at large chapter which i happen to be wearing oh do you okay oh there we go and uh and it was formed in 2002 and you at that time you were the secretary treasurer at the time right yeah i'm i'm mary boxster number two um jerry trowbridge the late cherry Tro jerry trowbridge was Mary Boxster number one. He walked it through the BCCA to get us chapter status. We had talked about doing it for a couple of years and I think he finally caught me on micro night late and I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so it was an effort to get Bach minded uh, collectors together and provide Bach brewery and the collectibles information in the Mary Boxster Gozetta newsletter, right? Right. Yeah. At one time we had well over a hundred members in the chapter and uh, our newsletter ran for 10 years. Um, and we're, the chapter's inactive right now. Yeah. So the chapter is no longer together. And then uh, a lot of the stuff I did when I put stuff together is I used, I went through all the, the Mary Boxer, uh, Goat Zets, uh, to, to pull information out and then ask you some of the questions because obviously you provided a lot of the information. But I think right now the only way you can get access to the actual Mary Boxster newsletters is through uh, Beer Magazine Viewer, which is available up on the BCCA page. And then uh, uh, Randy has a page that you can go up if you just type in B, Beer Magazine Viewer, so BMV. 3.0 is his new version. You can download all the newsletters that are loaded in there. There's a great amount of information and all the, the Mary Boxsters are available through that because they're no longer available on a web page, correct? Correct. Yep. And there's there's over a thousand pages there. So 
you know, two things I would encourage anybody that's curious about Bach beer and Bach beer collecting to go and read some of the articles in there. And if you've got information that updates what was done then, because the first issue came out in 2002, the last one in 2012, um, I would love to hear it. You know, if you know of uh, more examples of some of the rare Bach cans, uh, we, we, we did a top 25 of the rarest Bach cans and we had a six pack that were all one of a kinds. Um, one of those, there's now two examples of known, the low pro national Bohemian Bach beer kind. Um, you know, I, I'm, I would still love to know that information. Yeah. Just so I'd encourage anybody, if you've got updates to any of the articles in there, you know, let's hear it. Yeah. So the t-shirt you got on that was designed by a West Virginia guy? Um, I had a friend of mine hand paint this t-shirt and John Krupnik and I dumped a lot together in the 80s and um, we called ourselves the Merry Boxsters because we were in Virginia and we dug a lot of Bach cans in Virginia. And drank a lot of Bach, I'm sure. Well, there was some of that. <laughs> Um, so we just called ourselves the Merry Boxsters that play. And um, I did an article, a column for the rustlings for years called the Bach page, which I don't know, I don't know how many years I were I wrote that. And that kind of morphed into the Merry Boxsters code set. Yeah. So when you and I were kind of running running through some of the questions and stuff like that. I asked you what your favorite brewery Anna piece was. Do you want to get to that later, Jim, or do you want to talk about that now? It doesn't matter. I can right now. Okay. I got to move out of the way here. Okay. Um, the piece is right behind me, and I hope the glare doesn't knock it out, but it's this West Virginia special box die, cardboard die cut piece. It's a Lindbog hunt, and it's a it's a real good likeness of Herkimer, who's hanging right above him. Hey, Keith, real quick, why don't you unshare so we can get Jim on full screen? Okay, yeah, let me let me do that. And if I can find my mouse. <laughs> All right. There we go. Is that better? There we go, Jim. It still it still has some reflection to it but that that's fine so that that being your west virginia piece is one of your favorite pieces huh? yeah it, it's it, it's a it's a twofer okay you know i'm I, I love west virginia beer items and bach beer items as well so that one hits both okay. targets so so this was one of the, the photos that was included in one of your articles early in the in the boxster editions that i believe it was from West Virginia, from the Fairmont Brewing Company. Right. Yeah. And then this Monarch piece, kind of, it was noted uh, that it came from Rich Lazuza and, and because there wasn't much as far as Midwest brewery and Bach pieces. And that's why this one was considered a harder piece to get. And you and I talked about Bach beer in the Midwest during the early times and, and why it wasn't so prevalent in the Midwest. And then we'll talk about a little bit on why it became prevalent on the on the West Coast as well. Well, it, you know, it follows the German migration west, no doubt. And a lot of a lot of German ancestry soldiers in World War II shipped out, went to the Pacific, shipped back, landed in California, and never went home. That's my theory. And so the 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 thirst for Bach beer all of a sudden blossomed on the West Coast. Kind of like, you know, in the Northeast, a lot of British uh, immigration to the, to the Northeast and IPAs were a big deal up there. I think it's kind of the same deal. Okay, so let me, uh, let me go back to sharing the screen here. Uh, no. There we go. So I put this one early for the simple fact that 
it's probably one of the more notable cans. It being a, a, a Bach ale uh, and obviously not in the best condition, but a lot of folks would have said, yeah, I don't think that's a, a real can. But then if you look at the coasters and all the other stuff that was available, the tray, the, uh, the bag. It's it, a real it, can. It's a, it's a real deal. So, um, so yeah. So, so what's the deal behind it being a Bach ale? Here again, I think it's just a marketing ploy to differentiate between Ortlieb and the other Bach brands around it. You know, that whole Philadelphia area was heavy with Bach beer from all the brewers in that area. And Southeast Pennsylvania was a heavy Bach zone. Um, a lot of Bach beer cans have been dumped in that area. So why do you think it ran on such a limited basis, though? Maybe it wasn't that good. That's entirely possible. Um, I mean, there was not a, there was never a second iteration of the Bach Ale can. All of the Bach Ale advertising really follows format-wise the layout of that can. You see the coasters in the beer bag. You know, they're dead on for the can. You know, I think it was a one run and done. Okay. So, yeah. So, one of the other things that's pretty infamous with uh, the Bach cans is the, the phantom lids that were on, featured on many of the cans. So, I think uh, at the time, this is what's called the phantom Bach can by you guys, the, the Boxster folks. In, in 2003, there was as many as 46 of them known. Uh, but by 2010, there was easily uh, 77 different versions or cans that featured the Phantom Bach uh, list on there. And I, I wasn't quite sure, Jim, and, and I had asked, but I, I don't know if I had gotten a, um, um, a response. Was a composite list built on the Phantom can, uh, Bach cans? That's on, the, that's on the Mary Boxster BMV. Um, you'll be able to pull that up, and it came in a couple of three magazines. We updated it a couple of three times. And here again, this kind of covers the gap. A lot of 50s cans and early 60s cans from the Midwest area clear over to Colorado to kind of cover the gap that existed in the 30s and 40s. And I, I, try, I liken it to cone tops. The breweries that didn't want to spend a lot of money on artwork could slap a Bach beer lid on their cans and sell a different product. The cone top uh, brewery brewers were cash strapped, didn't want to put a flat top canning line in, so they ran cone tops down their bottling line. I think it's the same sort of deal. So yeah, here, and, and the Hensler is notable for having a goat on the lid. There, there's three or four that had goats on the lids. Go, uh, Golden Brow had one, Hensler had one. Um, yeah, I think I had one other one, but I couldn't remember. I don't know if I kept that image of it or not, but yeah, there was at least two or three that I saw that had a noted goat on the actual phantom box lid, so. So yeah, so uh, is, that the is that the right term to use for these is phantom box? That's, that's as good as any, and uh, Jacob Parker has been keeping that composite alive. I think it's up into the mid-80s of cans now. Okay. So, so now that we're talking about 12 different cans and stuff and getting into cans, we'll start off with the 12-ounce flat tops first. So, so, yeah, so there was some discussion back. Obviously, this is from the uh, Mary Boxer newsletter 2010, and when there was some thoughts into what was the first Bach can. And there's a lot yeah. of theories out there and a lot of ideas. So go ahead, Jim. Well, this is the first six. Uh, I don't think there's much doubt about that. The, the first six uh, breweries to put Bach beer in cans. And the, to me, the winner first across the finish line was Pabst. And it's, it's totally because of the word Canco. If you look at the other five and look at the opening instructions, the opener says Canco on it. 
on, on the first PAPS can, it doesn't, but on later PAPS cans, it does. And so I think March of 36 is when that can first came out, maybe late February, but I think March of 36. And the, the others followed with, within weeks, but PAPS, I really believe, was the first one. So I'll try to help throw some of the theory behind that based off of what I could find from newspapers.com, and I, I think it'll help. What's interesting in the article that Jim did here is he said that he looked at a Ballantine box because he thought maybe the Ballantine box might have been the closest to it. And note, it says March 13th, 1936. Remember that date, March 13th, 1936 from the Ballantine folks. So this was the first Paps Bach beer uh, advertisement I could find with can mentioned in it. Although it says first and best in cans, uh, it is from February 28, uh, 1936. There was no known Bach cans, obviously, in 1935. So 1936 in the spring would have been the first time Bach would have been in cans. So this was February 28th, and then there's another one from Iowa City for March 12th. Then there's the one out in Los Angeles for March 20th that talked about it being the first time now in Tappa cans. And then there's a nice one that has the actual can on it from April 10th. So that, that kind of throws the theory behind why the PAPS was likely the first one. So we have February 28th was likely the first date. So Jim had put a date on there based off of a can that he had for the Ballantine Bach and he said it was March 13th, which would have been typically the, the opening day for those folks. So I was actually able to pull up a, an article that said that Valentine actually held a Bach party on Saturday, March 14th. So that would have been, they canned it on the 13th and served it on the 14th. The first advertisement I could find actually had March 17th and down at the bottom, you see down on the left, it says in bottles and in copper colored keg line cans. So that would have been March. So the date between PAPS of February 28th and Valentine was at least a two to three weeks. So that's that kind of supports the theory of, of what Jim was saying. And then I, I went back and I looked at the other the other um, cans that were included in that group that include the uh, the PON Bach, and that was March 16th, and then the Waldorf Golden Bach, but it doesn't say cans was March 19th. So that kind of gives some support behind that. And then the last one would have been the Valley Forge uh, uh, Bach. And they actually said further on down that it was gonna be available in cans and that was March 28th. I was unable to find anything that confirms or showed any advertisement for the Kruger Bach. So I couldn't put anything behind it. So if you kind of stick with that, then Jim is as perhaps being the first one. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. All right. So obviously like Jim was saying earlier is that Philadelphia was the, the noted area of some of the uh, the cool uh, Bach cans when they were coming out. So PON was obviously one of those noted and everybody loves to go on the PON can. Uh, their advertisements were pretty fantastic as well. Uh, and, then, and then obviously the Kruger, the, the Peter Dolger, the, the, the Jacob Rupert Bach, that's a, another well done goat. You gotta love the simple big go in your face attitude right. yeah. of these cans. Traumers and then of course Walt Waldorf as well. And then East Side, I, I included a East Side on here for the simple fact that the East Side has one of those big goats in your face. But what's interesting was I was able to go back and find in 1935, even though this can is a non-IRTP, East Side actually used the same label and then again, the first time on cans later on. So the first time they used it on a bottle was 1935, but they didn't can it again, or actually they didn't can it as a box until much later on. So, so then Jim, so looking at all these different, you know, box cans and stuff like that, what, what are one of the ones that you would have thought would have put it into a, a box can, but actually did? Well, go to your next slide. Okay. Poth. They're right in the middle of Philadelphia. Poth cans are notoriously hard to get your hands on. Everywhere they dump Poth beer cans is either in the ocean or under a suburb of the 50s. 
So uh, I, I hold out hope that there may be a, a pot bot can surface sometime down the road. You think uh, it would just be an ugly brown pot can with the word Bach on it? You know, that's a really good question. I, it could be a green one. Who could say? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, um, so I, I was able to show a couple of ads that it, Poth did put Bach out in, in bottles and on draft, but uh, never put anything in cans. Yeah, there's a lot of beers that I would have thought would have canned. You know, True Blue was turning out a different can every six weeks. Yeah, and you and I talked about that, and, and these were the ones that were kind of cool things that were out there in advertisements and on labels that just never made it into a, a can. This this global Bach would have been a beautiful can. I, I would have loved to have seen this. Physical. That would have been really sharp. Yeah, Red that, Top would have made a killer Bach, Bach can. Yeah. So um, here, here's a couple other ones. Sterling, which was a pretty large distribution of Sterling. They just never made it into a... A, a, a Bach can. Rainier, of all people, uh, out on the West Coast, uh, had some great uh, ads. Hams, again, and I'll show some labels a little bit later that shows you what the label looked like, the bottle label that would have made fantastic cans. Go ahead, Jim. Well, I was going to say, what about Be Beaverwick? What about Narragansett? Yep, I've got yeah, all right up there in the heart of Bach beer country, and they were putting a lot of cans out. But unfortunately, no Godius cans. Yep. Iron City would have been a cool can. Iron City would have been great. Red Top would have been great. Now, Miller is interesting because you, I'm, I'm glad you put it, you showed it. There's a Bach coaster out there. What the hell is going on with that? Yeah, I've got that image a little bit later on, Jim, so we can talk about that when we get so, there. Um, the other, the other one that's the mystery is Gretz. There's, there's paperwork floating around the hobby saying that there were boxcar loads of J-spouts and crown tamers for Bach beer. And they have never showed up. But, you know, here again, that, that whole Philly area is just, it's, it's hard for 30s and 40s cans. Yeah, so, and Narragansett again would have been a popular one. You would have thought they bottled it but never canned it. Yeah, and they had a big distribution area. Uh, Grobner maybe, but they weren't really big on canning like True Blue was. Yep. And then Genesee. Yep. I, I Genesee was everywhere, and Genesee was large. You know, they're coming out of Rochester. They're coming out of Bach beer territory. Um, and they had, they had gorgeous 30s and 40s labels, big goat centric labels. Yeah. So, yeah, what a shame. Yeah. So here's some of the labels that I pulled up that, uh, would have made some beautiful cans. I would have loved to have seen the, the Black Eagle, even the hams I thought would have been a cool can if it would have been the gold color, the Rainier. The, the way, Waylay is, would have been another one. I mean, you would have thought they would have put it on. The New Yorker, uh, you know, of all cans, you would have thought that would have been one that they would have used. Yeah, and and Whaley, you know, the Whaley Genesee thing, surely they could have found a way to put a can out. I yeah. would have loved to have seen it. So here's a couple more. There's the Miller. Uh, there's the True Blue. Now, I had that true blue that was a green version like that, and this is the brown version. But you can also see there's the white seal version up there that had that as well. And, it, you know, cores of all people, they, they sold Bach in the, in, the, in the early 30s, but, again, never canned it. That would have been a fantastic-looking can. It sure would. They put it in 30 subby bottles, and they, they got a really killer bo bottle cap on those cores caps course bottles so the, the the lucky would have been kind of cool looking as, as a big x can with the goat at the top of it fort pitt man fort pitt put out just about anything that they did uh and they didn't put out a pocket so oh well, yeah duquesne same thing yeah old german i mean old german out of out of cumberland maryland why in the world yeah just you know 
one of those things we just need to keep on. Yeah, exactly. So now we'll talk about the hardest can. And tell us what you know about this this can, Jim. Well, I, I don't know a lot. It's it, it, it's an enigma. It, this picture is out there, but the whereabouts of it are unknown to me. Um, I referenced earlier that there, we had talked about a six pack of one of a kind Bach beer can, but because this one is unknown it's, uh, as to its whereabouts, I put this as the number one, plus it's the oldest of the batch. The other singles would be the Honadal J Spout, which Mark Tracy's got, the Rheingold Bach beer flat, which I believe Mr. Fondren has on his shelf. Um, there's a black letter Esslinger party quiz, which is set in New Jersey. And then there's one Budweiser Bach that has the lettering over top of a long neck bottle on the side panel in green instead of red. Yep, and we'll get to that picture uh, later as well, too, Jim. And Dale Rogowski owned that can for years and years, and then he he parted ways with it a couple of years ago. So I, I put some of the panels together that kind of shows a different box, and I didn't know if there was any ones in particular that you wanted to talk about. Like I said, the Budweiser box, I've got images of the two different ones, and I just didn't know if there was any ones up here in particular that you wanted to talk about, Jim. Well, the, a couple of them uh, are what I call goatless wonders. They're, they're really hard to get in, especially in good condition. And I think they're really compelling just for that reason. But there's a, a column right there, the Arrow, the Dawson, and the F&S, all three killer cans and hard to get in really good shape, especially the F&S. And uh, Ballantyne, until the six, late 50s, early 60s, didn't put goats on their cans at all. Richbrow, same thing. They were always a latecomer to everything, but they put out four Bach flats with no goats on them before they started putting goats out. And those Bach cans without goats have got a charm of their own, I think. So, so, Jim, did you have your young son draw the goat for the Gretz can? Is that how that happened? Uh, well, no. Uh, my young son wasn't young when that can came out. Okay. Because it was I. Because that sure looks what, what looks what like happened is they actually went over to a maybe a fourth or, or great. School. Oh well, go, you know, go to the Pilsen Gold box. Oh, okay. Well, well, we'll get there. That's that's much further on. That's a hot hot topic item. We'll we'll discuss that. So here's some more. Obviously, the Gunther's Dancing Goat is probably one of the more noted ones as well. So any any ones in particular here you want to talk about them? Well, even though they're goatless wonders, the Senates are just really striking cans. Really beautiful color, deep saturated colors. The the one year 75th anniversary brown Bach, Bach beer is just gorgeous and, um, and pretty elusive. I think there's six or seven of them known to the hobby. Um, the Green Senate has, if you're ever hunting for a Green Senate Bach and you find the non IRTP version, grab it. There's only, I think, four of those known. The old Bohemian, go back again. The old Bohemian, the white one is fairly common, but the yellow one, there's four examples out there, two indoor and two dumpers. So, you know, that to me, that was always, the hunt was always a lot of what made me enjoy Bach beer cans, but the hunt for some of these really obscure cans. And there's uh, only two or three of the green horning box. Um, the Gunther dancing goat comes IRTP and non IRTP. The IRTP, I think, is much tougher. The gold national Bohemian box comes from Miami. 
So, you know, look at those labels closely when you're looking at Bach beer cans. There could be a real diamond in the rough there. The old crown with Bach beer in the box, not just Bach in the box, is a really hard can. It's kind of a sleeper right there. So that was a good pick on your part. Yeah, and then of course, as I was putting this together, I knew I missed a few cans, and those were the ones that Jim was talking about as the Goatless Wonders, Valley Brews, one of them, Golden Brows, one of them, and, and the Dubbler is another one as well. Well, yeah, the Dobler, you know, I can't believe as many Dobler dumpers as there are out there that there aren't more Dobler Bach dumpers. Especially for that area, and well, people have been dumping up in that neighborhood for how long? And the dumps are deep, long, and wide up there, so yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Now, the, gar the golden brow comes in a beer with a Bach lid, as well as in a Bach beer. So that's interesting. And so why Valley Forge and no Ram's Head? Or would that, would that have just been too ironic to put a Ram's Head Bach? Well, they'd be competing against themselves, wouldn't they? Yeah. Okay, so that, that was kind of a quick run through some of the 12 ounce cans. And then these are ones you obviously didn't see there. And this was an opportunity for Jim to talk about each one of these cans in particular. Well, the, the Esslinger uh, Bach beer with the way, the way to ride in the goat is a fun can, period. But here again, there's one variation of it that's almost impossible. Jim Plant found one in the American Can Company employee find years ago. The Manhattan comes in two different instructional orientations, and I think there are two of each. So in two panel and four panel. And so there are four examples of Manhattan. The Shinling is actually the first what I would say really good uh, beer can, Bach beer can that I ever got. I got this back in about 1978. And uh, the Sunshine, uh, that, that can, if you can get it with red in the sunshine, you've got, you've got something. Yep. Most of those are, even the indoor ones, the the shine is off of that red paint. So we talked about the Budweiser Bach. If you have, yeah, here we go. If you have one, you, you don't have actually both of them. So yeah, that that's the one of a kind. And I've I've turned an awful lot of Budweiser Bach dumpers, and I've never seen one. What do you think happened? Well, I. I think it's just a one run deal. And I'm, I've always felt like if they were gonna be found, they could be found right around St. Louis. Yeah. Because that green is a little darker, but you know, it's green and it's the green of the goat. Yeah. So these are some of the other cans I didn't include in, the, in that run I had up front. And these are primarily the breweries that really were front leaning when it came to the canning Bach cans. And that was obviously Paps, Rheingold, Rupert. So, and that, that Rheingold IRTP, the one that's all the way up in the right hand side, I told Jim I had it when I was at a show uh, down in Virginia. He said, no, you don't. I said, yeah, I think I do. And then I went up and I found one in a dollar box that I didn't have, but I did find it in the dollar box that same evening. So. Wow. Yeah. Now the Jacob Rupert with the, the silver can with the big goat, the non-instructional of that can is incredibly hard. There's only two examples known, one indoor and one dumper. The wood grain next to it, there's only two indoor version examples. Man Wick dumped about seven or eight or nine of them once. And I think... Um, I think uh, Andy Galamba and those guys dug three or four of them. And so that's the only dumpers of that can that are known. So the, the Rheingold Pale Double Bach with the Dancing Goats, there, there's a harder version of that, correct? 
there's a harder version. It's it looks just like that, but instead of it saying pale double Bach, it just says Bach beer. Okay. And that's a one of a kind can. Okay. The the can was found by a fella who worked at a prison and walked in the woods to let off steam and decompress. And he started finding dumps and picking up beer cans out of dumps. And he would only pick up beer cans that didn't have holes in them that he could read the labels. And he traded that can or sold that can to Dave Launt years ago, who sold it to um, another fella who sold it to me, and now it's gone on down the road. So, and then of course, one of a kind. This is the continuation of the Knickerbocker as well as the Schaefer. Schaefer. Yeah. Now the Knickerbocker comes with and without pinstripes. Yep. And then the uh, Schaefer Small Goat. I know of three versions of that. There's a large keg line box with, with IRTP. There's a small keg line box with IRTP and a small keg line box without IRTP. Okay. So here again, roll those cans over and look at the backside. There's variations out there that a lot of folks don't realize. Yeah. And, and, and when we did our practice run, you and I talked about your favorite can and I'll, I'll I'm stumped now, Jim. I can't remember what your favorite can was. Hang on, let me uh, let me unshare. Let me unshare here real quick. There it is, the Waldorf Golden Bach. So, this is the Franken can. This was the can that Charlie Bacon found up off Tupper Lake on an island and traded it to the Lewandowski's. They grafted a Waldorf can to the back side of it where it's where a section of it was missing. And the can weighs about a quarter of a pound now. <laughs> There's one other example of that can and it's a mint can. Yeah. And it's, it's in Cincinnati. So as far as my favorite can, uh, mine's the Neuweiler Bach. Uh, now if I can get this to, to flip, there we go. And the Neuweiler Bach, not only because of the graphics on the can, but I, I actually had an opportunity to dump some uh, some Neuweiler Bach cans up in the Pocono. So, so that did my, you dump this one? That That's mine sitting in the mason jar in the middle. And then the, the, the image on the right is the one once it was pulled out of the mason jar. Did you dump this one? I did. Good for you. So I did that with Mark Parambo up in the Pocono. So, yeah, New is by far my favorite uh, Bach can, just because. Yeah, it's a really striking design. Yeah. The ones that were all found were found fairly in a close area. Uh, how the distributor must have been trying, to, been trying to sell them, and then maybe they just shared them amongst themselves or something, because they were behind different houses and, and cabins and such. So, all right. So let's talk about this one, Jim. <laughs> okay, well, this can was found in Kentucky in a trailer, in a collection, in the estate after he passed away. Um, a fellow bought the entire collection, basically sight unseen, to help out the sister of the fellow who had passed away and to basically provide some money for burial expenses. Um, and I should note that the fellow, he's a well-known BCCA guy. I'm not gonna say his name because I didn't talk to him about whether he'd want his name out about it. But he found money in several cans when he went through the cans from the estate and sent that money back to the sister. Um, but this can was in that batch of cans in that trailer in Kentucky. And there was also paperwork in boxes around the, this can with other 30s cans from Fred Wolpe and Hal Noren. So this can probably came from one of them originally. And it, it is definitely a, a mock-up, paint-up, 
and my son didn't do that good either. <laughs> so, uh, per, pretty interesting can, and um, there was a big controversy when the Lilic books came out as to whether it was real or not. I maintain it absolutely is not. Okay. If you would run your finger across it, uh, you you would realize that there's two or three layers of paint on there. It was a nice attempt, though, right? Well, it's an interesting attempt. Yeah. That goat's been into the Bach beer for a while, looks to me like. Yeah. So you talked about this earlier. These were in the Boxster newsletters, and uh, someone had said that they were, in fact, test runs. Uh, but uh, how, how uh, authentic do you think these attempts were to, to actually put them in? And use well, them? I think the coasters are authentic, but evidently the the Miller can is not, and the export Bach is not. I mean, I, so, boy, I wish they were both real cans, yeah. especially the Miller. Yeah, that would have been interesting. Pabs obviously did a better job with theirs where they kept the goat on it, so. And then this is some nice uh, concept art by Andy uh, that was included in one of the editions of the Mary Boxster that he put together. Uh, there's a Genesee 12 goat Bach, a town club uh, Bach beer with a little goat in the uh, monocle, a Bay State Bach, and then a, a Williams Purple goat Bach. Yeah, Bay, Bay State and New England. Why didn't, you know, why didn't between those two brands, why didn't they put out one Bach beer can? Yeah, exactly. So I thought that was pretty neat artwork to include from Andy. So let's talk about uh, cone tops. Okay, well, as I said earlier, um, just a couple, three years ago, a second example of that national Bohemian Bach beer low profile came out, surfaced, and it's sitting in a collection very quietly. The other example is that one, which was in Adolph Granke's auction when he uh, dispersed his collection. The Honadal Bach was found in a wall. The other known example of that uh, was a fragmented can that the legend goes it fell off a shelf and, dis and disintegrated. The Gibbons Bach was a can that Will Anderson originally found, I think, or may maybe it was Bob Myers, but I think it was Will Anderson. And it supposedly sat on the desk of the president of the brewery for years. And there's only two other examples of that Gibbons Bach. And, uh, and I think you got one there. Hey, hang on, let me. Well, I'm really proud of it too. There you go. That's one of the examples of the Gibbons Bach. And that our grading system doesn't it doesn't have a means of accounting for cans like this. But this can was found in the same location that the other dumper was found 10 years apart. Yep. So let's see, then, uh, you know, I gotta get this to move again. Come on, oh, I went too far. We already talked about the Orderly Bach Ale and then of course the Kubler Bach and a bunch of those were found uh, just a little while ago, correct? That can's not as rare as folks think it is probably, but the graphics are so compelling. Who wouldn't want to have it on their wall? Yeah, exactly. So there's that, probably, I would say there's probably at least a case of those cans out there. So those those are the only uh, five known uh, cone tops, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now we'll go into crown tamers. Yeah, now you're... You, you don't have the the cams up there, and you don't have the Schlitz, and there's one more missing. What is it? Uh, so is the Schlitz the real deal? The Schlitz was a test can. Okay. It was a uh, copper painted paper label wrapped test can. The cams is absolutely a legitimate can. Yeah, and I didn't pull the image. It wasn't in the USB-C, or at least I couldn't find it, so. Um, now, the the Mitchell or Michael, however you say that, there's only two examples of that known, and they're both in that kind of shape. Uh, the Esslinger Bach, there's about seven or eight of them out there. 
Um, the Ordles 92, uh, there's quite a few of them around. So there's been several finds of nice ones. Um, the old topper, <coughs> to my knowledge, that's the best one in existence. Most of them are a click or two below that. And there's a couple of really bad ones. There's maybe a six pack of those out there. The Schmitz and Edlings are the most common crown tainer box out there. Okay. Um, and along then, with along with the Cam's paper label. And then of course there's this infamous uh, crown tainer. Uh, that would be this infamous crown tainer. Yeah, let me uh, let me pull it up here real quick. Go ahead, Jim. Show it again. Oh, geez, yes. There you go. All right. Yes, this was this was a scam of epic proportions perpetrated on the hobby by a fellow that I don't have a good thing to say about. Um, he manufactured them. In fact, I will show you something that nobody's seen. This is a affidavit that I received from the local police department that was investigating the fraud where they stamped this piece of paper with that Bach rubber stamp that you see the picture of that was used to create the Bach can. How many of those did he actually have, the rubber stamp? Seven. He had seven of them? He made seven of them. They got sold into the hobby for anywhere from about $350 to $600 a piece. So obviously there was some thought they were, they were legit after looking at the image on the right there where you see the black letters behind the actual. It's insidiously clever because when you look at the way the letters themselves are a little pale on one side of the letters and then you look at the letters in Ortel, they look very com comparable. So he fooled a lot of people, including myself. Shame on me. <laughs> so I carry this thing to shows. And so all of, you know, my better box cans that I have in totes, I have prices on. And when they look at this one on the bottom, I put a sticker on it that says, you looked. And then they say, well, what in the hell is that? And then I give, I tell them the story because I want to make sure that nobody gets fooled again. That'd be a good song, wouldn't it, Dano? Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, so that 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 obviously became pretty historical uh, and it was shared fairly wide. Uh, but obviously, even now, we continue to run into cans that are being done that people make cans to look like authentic cans. Well, the one of the most insidious parts of this is there are case boxes out there with that crooked box on the case that are legitimate case boxes. And if you look at the bottle caps, that box is crooked like that on <laughs> bottle caps. So if he put his creative talents to an honest job, I bet he could make a good living. Yeah, so that, that's pretty much it as far as crown tainers. And then there's the quartz. Okay, well, you've got the Esslinger Bach quart, which again, there's probably six to 10 of those in the hobby. The Bach flat top quart is a real can. The Esslinger Bach flat top quart is a real can. And I just couldn't find a good image of it to confirm. But there, there's two, maybe three examples of that out there. The difference being with the flat is it says contents 32 ounces at the bottom. That's yes. And they they showed up in a, a show in the late 70s. I think it was outside of Philadelphia. A kid carried them in in a grocery bag. Where they came from. Um, who that kid was, who knows. Now the Schmitzbach again comes in uh, one quart and 32 ounce versions on the bottom. So there's two versions of that. And then you want to talk about this uh, Natty Bow? Well, what do you want me to say about it other than it's bogus? Yeah, and obviously you either had your son painted again or he 
took it over to some grade school to get it taken. Well, actually, Dave Lott painted that. Oh, okay. Oh, um, he's not the best artist. We'll, we'll at least. No, but you got to give him an A for creativity. Yeah. Uh, I got that can from him at the New Jersey convention in 1990. And I had it sitting on my television set in my room just because, you know, it made people stop and talk. And we had a pair of guys that I don't know, didn't ever did know, never did know who they were, came walking in. And the one guy's acting like he's a know-it-all. And they're looking around and he goes and looks at that National Bohemian and he goes, huh, well, you don't see those very often. And I thought, oh, okay, yeah, you don't. So, so that is a one of a kind. Yep. And, and uh, I believe Doug Groth still has that can. So here's just a little image of the Esslinger Bach. Nice, cool little advertisement. Uh, and I didn't well, back up to that a minute. Okay. Uh, Buckeye had a similar rig set up um, with Bucky who was their spokesman, uh, you know, he was, he was a short fella and he had a, had a goat called Bucky who drove him around town and they gave away Buckeye Bach beer. Yep. So I didn't include many tabs because we'd be here all night talking about different tab cans, but this is one at least I wanted to put up there, and you could tell the story behind it. Here, let me let me let me stop sharing there. There you go, John. All right, it's a wrap, and on the back of it it says, uh, "This reproduction complements of Film Fest Two, designed courtesy National Mar Brewing Marketing Department of the National Brewing Company of Baltimore, Maryland." This was given out at a James Bond film festival in about 1980 in Florida. There, there was also a regular James Bond wrap the year before get, given out, but I've never seen one of them. Oh, okay. So then this is obviously the biggest Bach can, obviously the, the only gallon version of a Bach can. So uh, that's the only gallon version, no, no Bach lidded gallons. Yep. And there's probably, I don't know, four to six of these out there. So the one thing we didn't talk about was 16 ounces. Well, I only know of one 16 ouncer and that's a Canadian ace that's got a Bach lid. So it's one of those phantom Bach. Cases. So it's a, it's a phantom. That's the only one I've ever seen. And I've seen three of them. Yeah. So, and then as far as Brewery Annie goes, there's not much out there. There's a couple of trays. You got two of them over the top of your head. Uh, and then there's this tip tray. And you said that the tip tray was kind of the stock art that you think was used for two, two different types of breweries, correct? Correct. And that, and now obviously that's pre pro. Yeah. So I didn't include a whole lot of Brewery Anna pieces. We could have talked about those all day. Now, these fingers look familiar. Uh, I think you'll identify those to be your very own fingers there, Jim. Uh, so I think you and I had discussed, and you said that these were not, these were fake. Those are all fake. The, the old Manhattan and the Peter Hands was done by a fellow that's well known in our hobby, uh, whose name I won't mention because he never tried to purport that they were anything other than just Marcos. Yeah. The I, Arrow beer was purported to be real, but obviously is not. It's a, a paper cut out of a label. Yeah. And, and I know you're, you are uh, pretty uh, noted yourself for collecting little bottles. And I think you've made mention possibly wanting to talk about little bottles sometime if we get a chance. Yeah. I'd love to do another webinar on mini bottles. Okay. So then uh, I didn't include a whole lot of craft cans. We could talk about craft cans, but one of the things you and I talked about when it came to specific craft cans and Bach beer today, uh, first off, what do you, how do you think the market's doing as far as Bach in cans as craft beer right now? Um, it, it's really interesting to me that it's about a 60-40 a split 
between 12 ounce and 16 ounce bot cans. There's an awful lot of 16 ounce bot cans coming out. Um, I, I've got about 45 or 50 12 ounce bot micro cans. I've got another 25 or 30 16s. And it seems like as the further we go on, the more that moves to about 50-50 between 16s and 12s. Yeah. So it may be a canning cost versus the volume versus what they can sell them and the margins they get that it's more attractive to sell beer in 16s than in 12s. Okay. So th this should look familiar. You, you want to talk about this, Jim? Well, that, that was my Bach beer can collection at the height of its infamy. Um, across the top, you see the cones and crowns. Um, including one of the Mitchell crown tainers. Um, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six rows of, of Bach flats. Uh, then another three, three rows of Bach pull tabs. And then two rows on the bottom of Bach lidded cans. So I, I had a few. And then uh, a bunch of Bach ball knobs. I like the Bach ball knobs up in the top left corner. Yep. And I still have those over here on the wall. Uh, I, I got to the point of no return with, with Bach cans and uh, I've dispersed most of the collection. Yep. So this was from 2008. This is a uh, BCCA display that you and Brian Williams put together. It was, yeah, this was this was my collection and I took it to the Orlando convention and set it up. And boy, Jim Mitchell, I'm telling you what, that man ran a tight ship. We were about 15 seconds before we ran out of time to assemble this thing and he was going to throw us out of the hall. So, uh, we got, we got it done, couldn't have got it assembled without Brian's help. Um, and then we won, we won best of show that year. We won the yeah. Chuck Hillier Award that year. I was pretty yeah. proud of that. And Herkimer's front, front and center right there. So Jim, anything else in particular you like to talk about that we didn't cover Bach beer wise? Just that, you know, in addition to beer cans, Labels are a great side hobby. Bach beer labels are wonderful, beautiful things. I really like the bottle caps. Um, I, I've got a pretty nice Bach bottle cap collection. The ball knobs are almost exclusively foil stick-ons that they would put over the regular Bach ball or regular ball not beer ball knob. Um, and, and then of course, signs. There's a lot of wonderful art out there. So, you know, any way you want to go, yeah, the Dr. Seuss Narragansett pieces are just tremendous. So any way you want to go with box stuff, you can't go wrong. Yep. So I'm going to stop sharing because that's the end of this, the slides that I put together there, Jim. Uh, it went a little longer than I was kind of thinking it might, but uh, I think it was a lot of good information. So what we'll do now is we'll unmute everybody. Uh, the only other piece I want to talk about is what you and I talked about, Jim, is that Horlick piece behind you, because a lot of people see that in collections. And I had to put a note out to you on the whole deal behind the Horlick and, and what people need to look at uh, and realize when they see it, because there's a typo on there. Yeah, the Horlocker piece. Um has got a error in the mandatory. It, the Horlocker's misspelled, which I didn't realize until Keith pointed it out to me. Yeah. Uh, but the story I've always heard is Glenn Raisner, who's a former president of the Rusty Bunch, um, was at a show at the Horlocker Brewing Company and set his table up against the wall and there was a hole in the wall under his table. He was about 12 or 13 years old. So he crawled through the hole. He crawled into another room and there were these die cut cardboard box pieces stacked against the wall, probably because the mandatory was wrong. They weren't out for distribution. 
So he brought a bunch of them out from under there and started putting them on his table one at a time, trading them off and getting stuff for him at the show till he till somebody figured out what was going on. And then everybody, I guess, walked out with one. So yeah, now everybody can kind of unmute themselves if they like to. Hey, real real quick, uh, Mike Maitland, he wants to know what are the top six toughest bot cans that was in chat. Okay, well, I would say number one is the Lion Bach beer. Number two would be the Honadal J Spout, the Honadal Bach J Spout. Number three, I think, would be that Rhine Gold Bach beer that is only got a one-off dumper example. Um, the Black Letter Essinger Party Quiz can is a one-of-a-kind. The Green Letter Budweiser Bach is a one-of-a-kind. And then I think I've probably, I'd say it's a dead heat, but um, there are two pretty nice National Bohemian low pro Bach beer cans, but there's only one nice Waldorf and then the Franken can. So probably I'll put the Waldorf as number six in that six pack. So yeah, if you got questions now for Jim, you can unmute yourself. Don, Don wants to show off his mini bottles. Uh oh. Did you recognize those, Don? Yeah. He's can you see him? Himself. There you go. Mr. Meister Brown's got two himself as well. So Yeah, there they are. Yeah. So now now's the opportunity for anybody that wants to show off any of their box stuff, if they got any questions in particular. Like I said, the intent was for Jim to kind of give us the uh, law of the land as far as uh, box stuff goes. Uh, if you see him at a show, tap on his shoulder and ask him some questions. He's uh, well versed in uh, in the box. Okay. Jim, if you can find the other piece of this for me, for this PON, I'd appreciate it. Who am I? I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, couldn't pass it by at a, at a oh. show. <laughs> It's the Fig and Span P.O.N. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it sure is. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's missing the best part of the actual goat. So I know I got I got it from Dave Reed. I said I can't pass this thing out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Well, at no. least you got the eyeballs of the goat, so you no. can look him in the eye. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I collect the East Coast cans, and I, they, there's so many beer and ales that I was, I got that. Yep. So again, appreciate everybody checking in. Uh, we can stay up here as long as you want. If you got questions about the BCCA, I'm here to answer any BCCA related questions. What, what's that, Dan? What you got there, Dana? Oh, KC with the box. Oh, KC's, yes, sir. Yep. So which got... brewery is that from? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give me a second, old man. Eyes, I got a Atlantic, Chicago. Okay. okay. There you go. It's probably the easy one. Hey, Jim, the, uh, Jim, the A&P Tudor, I, my OCD, I mean, that's the last one I have to get. And every time I see it, it gets snapped up. Is that a real tough one, the flat? It is. And the, the, the pull from Cumberland is not easy either because it's a glued seam and it wants to separate. So it's hard okay. to get one in nice shape. The uh, the um, you're you're talking about the white A and P, right? The white and it's uh, yeah, it's got A and P at the top and a brown label. Yeah, yeah, that that can's not easy to find. The the, the older butterscotch colored ones are easier to find. Uh, I can't imagine people in the '60s racing to a supermarket to buy a Buck brand. Well, here again, that A and P came out of Cumberland in a pull tab. So why in the world didn't they put out an old German or an old export box? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll never know. <laughs> Checking out Joe's collection. What you got, Jack? You're on mute. Hang on. Ask to unmute. 
Got to unmute, Jack. There you go. You can All right. Space this came to my mind while the, the uh, presentation was going on. I was wondering when or where did the rumor come from that Hawk beer was a result of the cleaning of the equipment at the brewery every spring? You know, yeah, that's that been around that's been around as long as Bach beer's been around. Yeah. In fact, I think one of the ads that uh, Keith had in his presentation referenced that that it wasn't true. Okay. And I know it wasn't. True. I knew I knew it wasn't, but it always you know, you come I across think, come across the, the know it all people that have no idea what brewing really is about. Oh yeah, Bach beer. That's that's from when they uh, clean the uh, stuff equipment at the brewery, right? No, wrong. But you never can convince yeah, them. If, if, know. if only our hospitals were as clean as a typical brewery, <laughs> there'd be a lot less COVID in this world. Yeah. Amen, brother. Hey, we can talk about anything anybody wants to talk about. Well, I, I got some questions on some cans. Uh-oh, Vance's got a question. Yeah, a lot of questions. <laughs> um, I picked up some pop cans today. I was just wondering if they're worth anything. There are some juice tabs, so I know those are at least good. Can't see them. Well, uh, here. My camera turned off. No, I'm on. Yeah, let me look in the book there, Vance. I don't, I don't, think, the, I don't think the squirt's worth much of anything, but let me look. Yeah, yeah, there's two of those. Those are juice tabs. But I know Coke multi-diamond cans at least good. Yeah, those are good ones. Yeah, and there's... You're clean. I, have, I think I've... Yeah, I know. That's I was shocked, too. This, uh, she's, the lady was cleaning out her crawl space. Tell her to keep uh, looking. Just, yeah, yes. Well, it was her son who was trying to collect cans back like in, oh, I don't know, like in the 70s or something. And for some reason, he had these, and that, these are all the cans he had. But she said she wanted to get rid of them. She didn't want them in there anymore. Yeah, the squirt's only a 7 or $9 can. Okay. Yeah, so that's not and worth much of anything. What about the uh, Coke Multi-Diamond? Oh, Is it a juice tab? I don't know. Yeah, you're, you're going to ask me to look for something that's got a bazillion different variations to it. <laughs> really? Yeah, Cokes. Probably. You should Coke. po post, post those questions up in that, the Soda Pop uh, forum on Rusty Bunch. On Rusty Bunch. Yep, those, uh, guys, those guys will know everything. Yeah, we'll yeah, I'm not in the rest, I'm not in the Rusty Bunch, but no, I just... In the forum. You don't got to be uh, a Rusty Bunch member. We're cool. Okay. Well, these are Pepsis. I don't know if these are worth anything or no. Those are some of the horror yeah. versions. I don't, I don't know what this top is called, though. I've never seen that top before other than on a beer can. Yeah, it's yeah, like normal, yeah. Yeah, like the normal 70s or, you know, late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this one, this one says aluminum, this one doesn't. Yeah, Vance, you just have to register with a, with a, with a user's name whatever you want to make it to be Vance S or whatever up on the Rusty Bunch and you can post, mm -hmm. you don't have to physically be a member and they'll, yeah, okay. there's, there's a soda portion questionnaire and you, or you can ask the question there. So. Yeah, they'll know. Okay. Those guys know everything about pop cans, soda cans. So can no, I, that was the first thing I actually started collecting were soda cans because I have all these and I got to flip my camera. Just do what I do every year for the Rusty Bunch and that's uh Join online for three years. I think I'm paid up for the next nine years or something. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're yeah. like Arizona. Yeah. Joins up every year for three years. That's yeah, he really does it in person now. <laughs> he won't do it online. So, Kip, you were you were holding something up. What was that, Kip? Yeah, this is this is a label that you can add to. A, it'd be great if it was a can. Oh, oh look, right. Right. it's from Peoria. Yeah, where the the box, the goats breaking out of the label. Oops. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Stuff. That's one that yeah. If that was a can, I mean, is that a awesome. use permit label? No, it's not. No, nope. so, RTP only. Okay. I have a question for anybody. 
has there been any Bach can or Bach uh, aluminum can? Uh, what do you call it? aluminum bottle? Bottle. They had any Bach any aluminum box? bottle about? Yeah, somebody's got. Okay. Uh, Tim, I've never seen a Cabotle in Bach. Okay, I was just that curious. Mean it's not out there. Yeah, because the, the other question I had. Oh, Especially ahead. in the micros, you know, these, these cans come and go in the blink of an eye. Yeah. To me, that's yeah. part of the, the challenge of hunting these micro bots. <laughs> if you don't get them the two weeks they're out, you're not going to get them. Yeah. Yeah. The other question I just had was with the older European, do they have Bach uh, cans from like yeah. Europe? That are um, that have a goat on it. Yeah. Have you ever seen anything like that? Yes, uh, wire cutters and a, a, a drill with a screw if you have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, there, 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 are, there are multiple uh, foreign cans with goats in flats and in tabs. Okay, thank you. So, what's the deal behind the German ones where they're? They're double box. I mean, is it a real true double box, Jim? Well, I, I liken it to like the Belgians, the doubles and the triples. It's a click up on alcohol and a click up on the body of the of the brew, you okay. know, the specific gravity of the brew. Okay, cool. Hey, Keith, uh, question. Okay. I, I, I I was uh, I'm in the Aztec a number of chapters and Art Lacombe looked at this can. He said, "You might want to show this to others, because he said it might be rarer than the than the uh, real ones because it's a dumper." So I don't know if you can share that or do I share my screen? No, yeah. we we can see it. It's a part can, but it looks like it's got some. Yeah, it's got the discoloration on it. It looked brown at first, but yeah, it's got the red faded. I, yes. I don't. I don't know anything about the park can. Anybody have any other thoughts on the park cans? I've only seen them on grade one, on grade versions of it. There was a uh, an early collector in the in Jersey, in New Jersey, uh, Steve Franz. He was one of the, the uh, founders of the Garden State chapter, and he found like a case of park cans in park liquors in Ridgefield Park or something like that in New Jersey. And at the time, there were only maybe one or two known to exist. And he took those cans and traded them for usual suspects, 007s and, and playmates and things like that. And uh, others have been found, but that's probably the only number I've ever seen because they were just basically found in the liquor store. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, he found he found that he found that in the in the basement of the liquor store, and he wrote the hmm. story of that to the BCCA. So it's in an early BCCA news report, which cool. I I joined the club in about seventy seven, and a year or two later, sent away for all the old issues. So I have them all, and. You know, and I, I knew him from the Garden State chapter, and uh, he was the, the supplier of the park cans. Yeah, I joined in 76. I, I remember those old New Jersey shows at Princeton. I remember just oh, drinking. God, yeah, first one I, I was ever drinking went to. This. Remember that? First show I ever went to in, in, in uh, April or it might have even been in late March, 77. 450 or so. Half tables. Yeah. You could only get a four foot table space. That's where I got my name, Kubler Cone Top, because I was 15 years old and I found about 60 Kubler Cone Tops and I was very popular for about 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any left? No, no, uh, all gone. I, um, I was just a trainer back then. I just wanted, I didn't think about rareness. I just wanted to share and enjoy the hobby. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of us fell into that <laughs> mistake early. Yeah. So I made a great we... find of uh, a guy had, a guy had uh, uh, taken beer cans back in the 50s and either 
either cut, you know, if he top opened them, he cut off the lid. If he bottom opened them, he cut off the bottom and kept hardware in it. Mm. And through my father-in-law, I met this guy. And I got 300 cans from him for 300 bucks. <laughs> Came home, my wife was going to kill me for $300 on beer cans. Until Bob Taylor and George Arnold came over and spent the 300 bucks on 30 cans. They got a deal from me. Yeah. And then things changed a little bit. Yeah. Google Home. So uh, I traded two easily. I took them all to the first show I went to, which was at Princeton. And I had all the cans out on the, on the table. The whole bunch of them, instead of doing like one of each. Yeah. I'll trade that and then replace it with another one. But no, I I just traded like crazy. <laughs> now I'd like to have some, because there were, there were some good cans there. There weren't any super rares, but there were like maybe about a dozen amb ambassadors from Kruger. Yeah. Good can. Right That's what everybody, everybody's trying to get into mannequin, I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I didn't well, do that at least, yeah. but I, I did some... What, uh, color? what Jack, uh, I remember one of those shows in 79 or 80, I was walking around at Princeton, and okay. there was this can I had never seen on one of the tables. It was a Schultz. Oh, and, wow. And I found out later whose table it was. It was Charlie Papp. <laughs> uh, he, I, he may have had more than one, in fact. He may have drank them. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. But they wouldn't have been new if he did, right? <laughs> no, no. It would have been. Hey, guys, I got to go. Thank Thanks. you so much for this. I appreciate all the work. And this is a great idea, Keith. Great. Yeah, like I said, it's an opportunity I wanted to take advantage of with uh, us being COVID, uh, you know, crisis impacts, uh, still being able to enjoy the hobby and not be, you know, feeling like we're, we're, we're losing a, a grasp on it. So, yeah, anybody that's got ideas for what else they'd like to see, I'm looking at different states for different types of breweries, maybe just bring in some of the smart people. But, yeah, I'm, I appreciate you taking the time to attend. All right. Oh, that's cool. very, very, very good, good Keith. Thank you very much. Hey, I got another quick question for you guys. You guys know this more than me. Uh, what's an ace high worth? Is it a, uh, it's a six? It's a sixteen ounce. And what brewery? Um, it says in the corner. This one, Ace. Yeah. Mean ace. How much did you say, Don? The beer is not quite as tough as the ale. Yeah. I'd have to look. There's, there's scratches on it, so I know that obviously takes away from the value, but I thought the graphics were cool. Yeah, those are fantastic cans, obviously. Nice can. Yeah. This dude, like, got hit in the face. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is really funny. This this person, can, like, looks like uh, someone, like, tried to cut their eyes out. Yep. So. Domestic That's pretty violence. Can. That's domestic yeah, think, violence. That's the violence. That's the violence. <laughs> I only paid five bucks for it, so I thought that was okay. That's price. Right. So here's else, this one. Anybody else have any specific questions? Like I said, if you got a BCCA question, ask Don. He'll answer all your BCCA questions. <laughs> I won't tonight. No, I, I'd be more than happy to answer any BCCA questions you may or may not have. I, I've been trying to stay proactive up on the. Uh, the social media as much as I can. I've had Danny posting different stuff up on the BCCA webpage. And, you know, we're always looking for content to post up there. So if you got anything, don't be afraid to say, hey, I've got a story I've been wanting to write, uh, but I don't think it would be in the magazine. We're more than happy to put it up there. So, so Jim, did you make it through your, uh, your four or five beers there then, or what happened? I got one brave soldier left. There you go. Well, that's that's the way to do it. So, yeah, I didn't want to do this too late because then uh, uh, folks wouldn't come in too late. And I, I, I unfortunately didn't also think that, you know, 
starting it at uh, seven o'clock on the East Coast is uh, fairly early on a Saturday for some of the folks on the West Coast. So I, I, know, I know it was a little early for some folks to start, but uh, you know, again, I, this is an opportunity for anybody to talk about anything hobby related. So if, is, this if, a, is this a tough back can? Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's the first one I've seen. I, is it a dumper? <laughs> hey, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, if it's a dumper, it's got to be legit, right? Because this is the internet. That's right. That is a dumper. Heck yeah. Heck yeah I can beat that one. I got one that's completely uh, fallen in. Yeah, I, I got where it's at. I got one that I found up in New Hampshire. Couldn't read a damn thing on it. Couldn't see the color or anything. But I can tell you what the can is. Because it's a 16 ounce cone top. And I found it in New Kruger. Hampshire. Kruger? No. Kruger? That narrowed it down. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. Sorry, Jack, I hit the wrong button. I, I muted you. I was going to make you the speaker. Okay, I unmuted me. All right. Thank you. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> I, hey, I, I thought my window. You're was just closed. jealous of me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sixteen ounce. That's it. It's only only one brand. Yeah, it could only yeah. be either oh, the yeah. beer or the ale, and because it was New New England, I figured it was the ale. There's a, there you go. There's a much better condition than the one I found. <laughs> How many of them was, were found? It, it was in a movie oh, theater. There was or something. unbelievable. Uh, it was yeah, like before Blue the nine, one year. Yeah. yeah. Two or three hundred or something. Yeah, it had to be hundreds of them. And the guy was still trying to get top dollar. value or whatever, you know, top dollar for them. So they just sat there. Yeah, they were blue gray. They were all over blue gray. Which can was that? The uh, 16 ounce. The ale. Beer. 16 ounce. Woody's fine. All the Crofts and the Krugers and all. Yeah, that. the lemon yeah, and yeah, all. yeah, a lot of Crofts. Well, now there's two versions of that ale. One with a register mark in between the legs and one without. Ah. I don't know what mm. it is. I don't know what was that what dumper that I got either. <laughs> this is all he, rust. He couldn't even see the legs. Yeah. <laughs> If all of a sudden I uh, I go to turn off my uh, my camera and uh, something happens, uh, don't blame me. We'll say you work for the New Yorker. That's right. <laughs> I've been, you know what? I've been waiting all week to do this just so just so I could be Jeffrey Tubin for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> Danny did that last night to us. He said he was leaving. <laughs> When I saw the name come in, I swear I would have thought it was Larizolo coming yeah, in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where is he tonight? No, no. Yeah, he's not here. Uh, you know, I figured he'd be here half naked or something. His, his Jeep broke down. Oh, give me that Jeep. Yeah, he could be stranded in the woods somewhere. Who could say? Yep. All right. Uh, I, I guess I got to be somebody else now. I guess it got to be me. <laughs> All right. You should be able to change your name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. First, the first uh, time we had the Garden State, uh, I mean, a Jersey Shore uh, Zoom meeting, half the people had their wives' name. Yeah, I, I did because Janet Janet got me on. And uh, Steve Kulowski had his daughter-in-law's name because it was son, his son's computer, but it was her name on it. So, uh, was it uh, uh, Linda, Linda Potziadli, formerly Joe, said, I guess I started a trend here. <laughs> but he didn't start the trend because Amy uh, Wiltshire did, but it's another story. <laughs> hey, I got to go, guys. So, 
Take so care. Long. Come on, man. Bye, we'll talk see to you. you. See you at the convention sometime. Make sure you yeah, join, join up on that Rusty Bunch forum. You can ask all the questions you want, man. Yeah. I'm trying to go to convention 50, but my parents keep saying maybe. So it's better than no. Well, maybe it'll be eventually held sometime. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I think Dance, school started, but I'm can. trying. Vance, we'll reply to that email. Vance, reply to that. Reply to that oh, email. Yeah, yeah, I will. We'll see you, buddy. All right, see ya. Take care. Yep, you too. What's up, Don? The other Don just came in. You're yep. muted, Don, right now. You come in muted. Oh, Don Wild, you missed it. And he's muted. Do you have that? Thing where you, they can unmute themselves, Keith. Uh, I can, yeah, I think yeah. came up and said unmute. Am I unmuted or yeah, am I? You're fine now, Don. Yeah. Um, you're good. Uh, Hello, Don. I have to turn the ball game down in the background here. I can't. So. Hey, we missed you. We missed you there, Don. Where'd you miss me? When? Yeah, we had already started this event. Oh, oh. Well, I was just. Uh, I'm <laughs> losing track of time. <laughs> you had to work today, huh? Well, I was on uh, I was on call for the practice today as well. Oh, okay. just doing just doing stuff with uh, you know people who couldn't pee, people who had uh, that sounds like me. So, <laughs> people like uh, I went. Well, I can't talk about that but anyway. Uh, so, do you have to do any any anal thermometers there? Uh, uh, no, Hello. no, I uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, no. yeah. yeah, I have to take temperatures of everybody that talks to me, but, uh, yeah, yeah it, uh, anyway, I was, uh, Jam it. <clears throat> so what, so what have you guys learned so far? What did I miss out on? I obviously, I came hey, here Danny. to learn, so uh, Ro, I haven't heard Romine say anything yet. All these, all these spot <laughs> cans, all these spot cans are easy. They, oh, they don't, they're not worth anything. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, so where are you going, John? Hands to me. Well, no, you're right. See any pitch? Where are you at, Donnie? Because you're not. You don't look like you're in your normal. Uh, I, I'm. Uh, I'm upstairs where I can watch the. Uh, my wife is usually can watching the TV, me? but because of football, I've I've commandeered the uh, the main TV upstairs. So. I think, I think Papu, I don't know who Papu is, but it sounds like they're trying to do something. Yeah, Jim. Jim. Radio. Papu, that Papu sounds like Mike something coming from the Yucatan. <laughs> Who's there? Knock, knock. It's the Hillebrand, 276. <laughs> How are you doing? The question I have is I only collect full cans. Do you know people who have full box cans, the older ones? Um, they they show up once in a while. There's been a few 50s Gunther's box cans over the last few years, but actually the last one I saw, we drank it. <laughs> um, yeah. And, yeah. And it was surprisingly yeah. good. I got a, um, I got a full Paps box. It's full? The full Paps, Paps. box? Yeah. So yeah. they're they're around, but the older they get, the more prone to leakage they get. So I would say drink them before they leave. Well, that's true. Well, I understand all, that. We all have that problem. The older we get, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you start to leak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it gives your display that uh, odor. Well, yeah, it would give it a character all its own. There's no doubt about it. It does that, yeah. But Walls I still have several this. that are full. Well, chill them and bring them to a show I'm at. There's an actual, there's a club we have well, in Facebook, the Iron Gut Club, where we bring old beer cans and beer bottles and drink them at shows. They have to be uh, 40, oh. 50 years old. Yeah, drink we're 40 them. and 50 years old. Do you think those would be good? We drank them from you the third in that Iron Gut it Club. It varies from can to can. Um, at the New Jersey Canvention in 1990, 
Dave Lunt brought me a cold Atlas Prager Bach can and said, if you drink really? it, you can have it. <laughs> well, I have it. <laughs> go on That's Facebook. Sad. Go on Facebook to the Iron Gut Club and you can see all the old cans that we've drank at different shows. Charlie Smith's in oh, there. Yeah. There's some yeah, some a lot of the thirties thirties we've drank. We thought maybe that was a cure for COVID to drink. <laughs> the uh, last one that we did that for the cure was a um, cool mule malt liquor. It was a bit grim. Oh, <laughs> I bet it was. Even, even fresh, it'd be terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we followed that up with a uh, hopping gator. So it was a bit grim. Yeah, it was worse. <laughs> so, Mike, were, were you at the first convention then? I was in 72. Okay, so yes, I was. And you're going to be at the next one. And, I, right? and I've been to um, every single one since. So you're Tony. And I happen to be the youngest Tom team member. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought you were for a minute. You're the youngest? I you even went to St. Louis this year, just in case. So are you I did. Play and I brought a 50-year. Uh, I brought a. I, I went down there. I, it's where I was born and raised for St. Louis. Yeah. So I went down there anyway, and they brought a uh, 50th anniversary can of uh, Bush, Bush 50th anniversary can. Oh, cool. And we drank that anyway underneath the arch. <laughs> Way to do it. That's awesome. Mike, let's make sure we're paired Mike, up and play golf next year. We shall. Looking forward to it. Mike, are you in that picture from the first year? I am. You? Kind of in the back center. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, With the diaper to... on. Let's see if I can. I'm sorry. Who can get it first, Keith? Me or you? I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> I figured one of you two would be looking for it. Oh, right, yeah. I'll let Keith do it. Hey, do you, um, I, I, do I have it. I have it saved now. It's just a matter of need. Oh, I can I can just pull this up. It does. You select two old box bottles. Oh, there it is. Can you make that picture bigger, Keith? I, I, I got to open it up and paint to do that. Here. Hang on. Now you got to make me open it and paint. I'm going to beat you to it, dude. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's a race. It's a race. I'm saying I can't minimize. What did I have a... Uh... Yeah, it says I can't minimize Zoom right now because I'm recording. Well, Danny, you collect full Bach bottles. What was that? Do you collect full Bach bottles, Pat Poe? I do not collect bottles. I only collect cans. Okay. But well, I only collect are. full cans. Come on, man. And they do leak. Yes, they do. But most <laughs> of them are in storage. All right, there we go. So, Mike, where are you at in this photo? Are you on the left side or the right side of the banner? Listen. He's the. He's the one that doesn't shave yet. Yeah. Do you know where you're uh, at in the image, Mike? Oh, here, here. And beers to be. Are you breaking up? So where the letter right, be, right behind the bat, the banner. So right. you're you're right behind the. Okay. Beat. No. See, and I have a. Uh, Yeah, of can poster in the middle. Oh, okay. The poster in the middle. 
I have black hair, acid, and you find it? Hello? You're breaking up, Mike. You're breaking up, Mike. We couldn't hear you. I, I yeah. think you I think you yeah. said you're right behind the sea and can, right? So you're the one standing next to the, the young guy with his mouth wide open, then I have to assume. And there's a lot of people that ain't with us anymore in that picture. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I was, I was lucky enough to see number nine last weekend or the weekend before when I went up to New Jersey there, so. Yeah. So is is Tony Brunning not a tone time then? He not attend them all because he. Oh, yeah, he's oh, he gets he gets, he gets the he gets everyone that's in the same place. I think. Yeah, so one of the things I'm I'm going to try to work out is, um, supposedly we have some in with, um, the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, someone that's got a little bit of access to the St. Louis Cardinals, and then there's a a, a kind of a a farm league that plays uh, there in St. Louis area as well. Uh, I want to get one of the youngest guys, not the youngest guys, obviously it's the oldest guy, uh, to throw out the ball, uh, either at a cards game or that, uh, that farm league, uh, throw out the first pitch that week. So that's something I'm working on uh, for that uh, convention time. Well, COVID, COVID screwed us up last year because I have some connections with the Cubs and with the Cubs in town. I was going to have a couple of them walk around the hotel with us uh -huh. and, COVID, and everything screwed that up. You can still bring them down next time, uh, Don. We, we don't have to have them play ball if they're just going to walk around the hotel. They're more than welcome to join us. Well, they'll be in, they'll be in season someplace else at that time, though. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm giving you a hard time. We want as much... Uh, exposure to, uh, you know, the highest level folks as much as possible, so. I want the St. Louis Browns men, members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's some, I don't think any of those players are the wrong. The, young, the youngest St. Louis Browns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. Well, there's Mike, his camera's on now. Yeah, there you go. You're muted, though. You're muted. Don, my question is, how many people from the New Jersey picture, 5 a.m. picture, are, are here tonight? There's two of us that I know of, me and you. Of course, <laughs> was Janet was night. here. Janet was here when she got me on. That was a rough she night. Took off. Yeah, we lost Mike again, dang it. Here I am. Yeah, we got no video of you, though. Oh. Yeah, I lost your video. What am I doing? Right. <laughs> and you're on your phone, so you're not doing too bad. That's you know. yeah, yeah. That's still fantastic. That's better. <laughs> That's better. No, my uh, uh, hey Jack. Uh, yeah, Jack. Yes. My uncle had a contract with the St. Louis Browns. Uh, oh yeah, to be an out to be a catcher. But it, it, he paid thirty bucks a month. But he didn't take it because he could be a salesman, a shoe salesman at 35. Jeez. There you go. But then he has to smell it at his feet. There you go. Yeah. But he got a discount on shoes, too. So it made a big difference. There you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Hey, Mike, did you see the video? It's posted on the website and on, on Facebook of the, of the first convention. Yeah, that's good. I did not. Okay, because yeah, there's, there, there's a spotlight on a young kid that looks 15, 16, 17 years old. For a couple minutes, they're they're following him in that video. And that could be you. <laughs> it could be 2020, too. I don't know who's, who's younger. Yeah, Mike. No, I was, uh, I was 22 at the time. Okay, oh, so this guy's a little younger than that. Yeah, it's a 17-minute yeah. video. It's up on the beach. Oh, is it, uh, is it Gilbert L. Sun? I'm not sure. I, I couldn't tell you who it is. Okay. 
I only recognize I'll look at one it. person in there. I'll look Thanks, at it. You, you might know, Mike. Yeah. So you're, so you're the youngest Tontine. I am. Because hmm. Marv Raleigh used to tell me all the time he was the youngest Tontine. No. Uh, Raleigh's was, older than I. He's, he's obviously, he was pulling about, <laughs> He's about four months older than I am. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> When Christensen was always saying he would outlast you, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> so the, now here's a story for you guys. And the Tontine people, we put these beer cans in a box. Yep. Have you heard that story? Oh, yes. Okay. And there was 52 cans. And we put them in the box because there was 52 guys. And they're not very good cans. They're just rotten cans. It's a, people took them off their table and they would put them in a box. And it's a last man club. Yeah. So they went on and, and a, we were in a box and they disappeared. And for years, nobody knew where the cans were. <laughs> nobody really cared, but we didn't nobody know where the cans were. That's great. So <laughs> I found them. Um, Hank Herbs had them, and I found them when he passed away, and I put them in storage in a box, and I never told anybody. Oh. <laughs> they were looking for them, and I had them. <laughs> so where are they now? I've got them because I'm the youngest guy. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't there a picture or something years and years ago of – all the cans that were in the the Tontine collection or whatever, or there was an article or something done. There on was. What was. We in had a there. display one time for a, yeah. for a, at a Did convention. Display. I remember the display at convention. I think Denver. I think yeah. Denver was part of that. Made that display. And had yeah. The there you go, Keith. There's a there's a future article just waiting. Just I was to, I was there. I was there guarding displays that year. And Ron Mormon happened into the uh, display room. And the Tontines always give him a bunch of crap because he didn't go to the first convention. He went to everyone afterward. But he, oh, he, looked at, he looked at that collection and he said, if I was one of the last two Tontines, I'd kill myself so I wouldn't have to drive him <laughs> home. <laughs> That's it. They're, they're not really great cans. No, they're not. Oh, no, they're, 70, not. they're not good kids. It's, it's, bra it's right. bragging rights, though. I don't know who you're going to brag to. Everybody else will be dead. You also <laughs> put either a cone top or a flat top in there. That would have been oh, that was it. There's one cone top, a champagne velvet, which yep. is full. Huh. Bill? <laughs> so you're what holding you up that one. And there's a full uh, hopping gator. That's not the one I drank, but there's still a full hopping gator in there. Was that champagne velvet probably the toughest can in that collection then? Probably, yeah. yeah. There's, some, there's not, some crap in there. Yeah, oh yeah, they're not excited. They're yeah. not excited. It was the thought that counted. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We just took it off our table and put it in there. Give me a can, okay, and you just took one. I'm surprised there isn't a country club. Maury McPherson would have put one of the 40 cases he found, one of those in there. Oh, there you go. That was from 1980. Oh, there we go. Here I am on the uh, second guy in the first row on the right. Yep. Next the black to, uh, beard. Next to Kid Hall there, right? Isn't that, no, who is that? It is uh, Kid Hall. Yeah, yeah. Kid, Kid Hall and... Uh, Ah, God, I know the other guy, Wendell. Is that Eddie Wendell next year on the other side? That is Eddie Wendell, yeah. yeah. I think that's Jerry Weishar standing behind you. It is, yes. Oh, that is Jerry. There's my old roommate, Lou. Ah, God, I miss that guy. Bruce Gregg, third from the Lou's way in the back, in the first. yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh, what's his name at the first? Uh, uh, First guy in, on the left, uh, I know his name. And it's Bill Christensen. Bill Christensen. Yeah, yeah, Christensen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that McCoy Christensen. in the background or in the back, in the hat? Yeah, yeah, of course, with the beard and the hat. Right. Yeah. yeah. I believe it was um, 
Seattle. You can, you can tell all us old guys are all like this close to our screens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bill Christensen to get to the convention, I believe it was uh, Seattle or Portland. Portland, yeah. Portland. He was in Europe. He was in <laughs> London. Yeah. And he flew to Concord to get to the convention in time. Mm. Oh, yeah. I like the year he... It's awesome. That's great. He entered the, uh, the Beer Drinker of the Year competition and wrote his resume as people he... Places he was drinking beer and they were having a revolution and the government was being <laughs> overrun. And he was at about... He was about a, a half a dozen of these places, like... Santa Domingo, or uh, <laughs> that would be Bill, and it would be Bill. And he would, he would put that Do you in remember the year resume. when he lost his glasses? He broke <laughs> his glasses. He lost them on an airplane, and Bill, without his glasses, can't see. Couldn't <laughs> yeah. see three feet in front. Of him. No, he couldn't see anything. Right. And we would just give him bad beer to drink, and he'd go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Bill, this one's really good. We're just tricking you before. And then we'd give him something really bad. And he'd go, oh, <laughs> 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 There's Luke Katie on the right. And oh, yeah. T-shirts. John right next to him. Yep, number nine. John right Ayer, yeah. Bill Miller. Who's that? Uh, just just to the left of Bruce Gregg, that photo looks like it's doctored to put that image in there. Yeah, that does. Look yeah, weird. they do that. That was that, that was the sober one, Harry. Uh -oh. Harry okay. Keithline. Yep, Harry. He was, he was he was probably there, just not there at the time of the picture. So then they. Yeah, Lou, Lou would do that. He'd uh, he'd get a hold of a picture of the guy and then put him in there Probably. somehow. You know. Yeah, you got the mask guy in the middle there. That's just got a black face. <laughs> yeah, they obviously couldn't get that one filled in, so. Yeah, yeah Lou would say to me, uh, oh, is the mask guy at the uh, Oh, this is Scotch people. Scotch people, yeah. There's the Playboy chapter. There's the Playboy There's chapter Dickie. with the big man there. Yeah, Dickie's right in the middle on the last row. Oh, come back. Yeah, oh, the Rich is right in front of him. I didn't know Rich was there. Yeah. Go past Bahala next to Rich. The veteran. Yeah. And you got yeah, a lot uh, of them. A lot of them are gone now, too. Jesus. Yeah, you got uh, what's his name down in the front row there? Uh, and better, yeah, better, yeah, yeah. That's Polly. That's Polly. Better on the left, second row. Yeah, it's Polly on the left. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's Polly. Yeah. Playboys allowed allowed their wives to be in the picture. Auntines won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great history. I say I love history like that. It's awesome. That is. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wait for more picture shows. What happened there? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm pulling stuff up here. Just give me a second. Uh, uh, how no, come this is this is the internet. It's right now. We can't wait <laughs> 17 seconds. I, I'm a big purveyor of BV, B, BMV. Number is down to 23, less than a case. Now it's down to seven, I think. Yeah, seven. That, that, that's 1991, right. All right, Mike. Seven of you. Seven of us, yeah. Jeez. So it's, where it's are you speaking of there, Mike? Playboy probably yeah. doesn't have that much, that many either. Then no, right there no, the they're, they're row, even less. I think. From the, right. So that's you sitting on the guy's lap there, Mike. Is that what you're saying? I am. Okay. He's reading a book called The Tontine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like Jack Turner. Yeah, it is Jack. 
because I'm the youngest and Jack was the oldest at the time. Oh, okay. There's the Totonettes. It's the Totonettes, yeah. And if there's only three of them left, I think. Right. Yep. Marv's, Marv's wife, BJ, uh, is Aishar's wife, Jane, and somebody else. I forget who else. There's Big Dick right there. Yeah. It's Mr. Wild Ass himself. Uh -huh. Yeah, Rich and Henry Herbst. And Hank Herbst. I went to grade school with Hank Herbst. Oh, really? <laughs> well, well. Did you guys collect together as kids then, back then? No. No. I didn't even, I didn't start till later in life. So well, we not too a, late in life. We might have a connection with Hank Herbst again with the club, right, Keith? But we can't say nothing yet. Right. Oh. I just said it. <laughs> The secret. The secret. The secret. The secret's out. Next. We're waiting, Keith. We're waiting. Hey, I'm sorry, that, man. I'm, I'm... It's that 5 a.m. picture. Yeah, it's just uh, I was only able to pull up so many images. I, I, th I would have thought there would have been more, but I, I didn't see any. So let me see what else I can find here. You, here, here's a piece of history for you. Do you remember um, Mr. Burnell, Gil Burnell? He was yeah. number 13. Mm -hmm. Mr. Burnell, and I still call him Mr., he was my Boy Scout leader. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> there we go. And there you go. Yeah. And so I was 22, and I was on a trip out east. And I stopped, I had a car, and I'm on my way home, and I stopped at this place in Pennsylvania, and I knew Mr. Burnell collected beer cans. And I grew up with his boys and his sons, and his, knew them. And so I picked up some beer cans for him. And I brought them home, and my father and Mr. Burnell were very good friends, and so I start coming out with beer and beer and beer and beer and beer. And he said, wow, this is really cool. I'll tell you what. I'll take half of these, and you take the other half, and there's going to be this meeting in about three weeks in St. Louis. And that was Convention 1. <laughs> That's why I got there. That's why you got there. Well, That's the only thing I, I can find from when I got there. Mike, there's the only thing I can find from you. Enjoy. Was yeah. this display? I'm sorry? I said the only thing I could find with your name specifically was th was this display, but I got to keep on hunting here. Kirk Wyckoff and Mike Hillenry. Yeah, yours was the So Many Miles, So Few Cans. That was in 2000. That's right. Yeah, with Wyckoff. Yep. We got a picture of that. We drove a uh, can, oh, a, um, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a what van. Convention, what convention was that? Where? I don't know, but long time ago. 2004? Yeah, it was 2004. That was yeah. Dearborn, wasn't it? It was Dearborn, hometown. Dear, Dearborn, yeah. That was a good convention. Because you, yeah. you guys put the van in an antique car show. <laughs> we did. Yeah, we did. It yep. was the yeah, little light of Mustang. <laughs> yes, we did. Didn't Dixon bring old blue into it too? The old uh, blue was there. there. Yeah. Oh here, yeah. here's here's a good picture to share. There was the oh, oldest Mustang. member and the youngest member. There they are. Yep. yep. I'm looking at Romine with his uh Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Going. <laughs> and Jim with his hat. And they spelled it Jim Romaine. Like the yeah, lettuce. They always spell like the lettuce. Wrong. Yeah, you, you had some romaine lettuce in that hat, right? Oh, that's uh, funny. I, I don't know if you remember that, but that was that was Nashville. Yep. And the black Southern Baptist women were there. Yes. Oh yeah, oh, they were yes. great. They were dressed to the nines. Yeah, 
And Fancy so head. they had these big ornate flower arrangements at every elevator. And so <laughs> one thing led to another. I got on the elevator with three of those ladies with that on. <laughs> oh, my. They were busting the gut. They wanted me to go with them where they were going. Oh, they were. Course, I, they I, were great. I told them I couldn't pass the breathalyzer test. So I, <laughs> they were great. I, at one, one time, I got in an elevator with a few of them, and they said, "Oh, you, you, you beer can collectors are really a lot of fun." And I said. We say the same thing about you ladies. <laughs> I was following a oh. few of them going to the trade session one day and they were they were going to one of their meetings and all of a sudden this guy like a little rest to the nines comes walking out and they say, Good morning, Reverend. And he goes, Good morning, ladies. And I just walked away thinking. Boy, I'd like to hear that guy's creak. Man, I bet he could raise the roof. <laughs> so there are the cans. There they are. Oh, that's that's the cans, yes. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Number nine, not number ten. <laughs> oh, I bet Bob Leslie put that charge can in there. Yeah. <laughs> This is... What's the difference in all the Schaefer's there? Uh, I don't know what that is. Come on, Jack, you know. There's a, there's, no, that's a different display. Somebody put a different one together there. Yeah. Well, one time there was a, a Schaefer display like that, and somebody took the bottle label from the first Bach can and put it in there on the can. That, that is really cheap. Yeah. But Jim explained that to us. There's a with the keg line, with the square, without it, and IRTP. Yeah. The, the small goat, there's the a large goat. and a small, there's a large and a small keg line panel. And the small keg line panel comes with and without IRTP. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I, got, I got the, uh, I got IRTP, one of the two. And I don't know which one now. Because you, you pointed out there's two different IRTPs. Or no, two different. Uh, yeah, two one. different IRTPs. Two different IRTPs. I've got one of them. And the only non-IRTP I got is the grade 56 here. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Good for you. Looking good. Well, but you can read this, the part that matters. But I can read the part that matters because... It's got the small, it's got the small, uh, small keg lines and under it where IRTP would be, I can read and it's 12 ounces. It's got the, uh, excuse me, I got to take my glasses off. <laughs> got the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company and then Brooklyn, New York and under that 12 fluid ounces. Somewhere in there, I think right after the Brooklyn, New York, there would be the internal revenue tax paid line, and that's not there. Right. So this is the this is the box that's non-IRTP. And that's probably the toughest one of the three. Yeah, it probably is. Because after 1950, they only hand that maybe one year after that. Whereas it had been from to up to 1950 with the IRTP. Uh, I agree with you, Jack. Yeah, that's that's probably the toughest. Oh. There's Mike. Or Hilda Brand. Crazy hat night. Ugly shirts and crazy hats. That would be... Uh, 2001. Does, and, no, no, 2001 was the uh, pajama party. Oh, okay. This... Uh, I got on the elevator wearing my my t-shirt that said, of course I love you. My dick is hard. And <laughs> varnish is in there. And and this this chick gets on the 
elevator with me and she's looking at me like she wants to kill me. <laughs> and I said, I said, well, I'm going to a gallon party. And all of a sudden I noticed she's packing heat. She's uh -huh. a cop. <laughs> I said, whoa, you're a cop. <laughs> I said, this is really a pajama party I'm going to. <laughs> I'm not a perv, you know. <laughs> Jack, Jack, how many conventions have you been to? Since 1978, I have only missed one. And that was the one everybody says, you didn't go to Phoenix. That's the one I missed. So there's Mike, and unfortunately, you can't see on the very far right where it says insecurity, the guy in the shorts. That's Jack. I can see it's it. me. It is uh, Jack. Because yep. my fellow insecurity person is up front here. There you go. Little Grace. So that's Mike going through the bag right there, it looks like. It is. There's a picture of Wyckoff there, too. Yeah, I was going to say Wyckoff. I think that's Jim Mitchell in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Jim Mitchell right in front there. Oh, right? yeah, that's Jim. This yeah. is Jim here, yeah. Yeah, it says Kirk Wyckoff. Uh, doesn't provide any other names. So. Yeah, that's, that's Jim in the front. In the front. Yep. See, I'm, I'm a wealth of knowledge here. You sure are. Yeah, good stuff. Keep them coming. Yep. So here, here's another oh, one. He's a wealth of knowledge, but he's got slow fingers. I know. <laughs> <clears throat> if Danny doing it, he'd be popping them up quicker. Let's see. It says Mike's on here somewhere, but I don't see any. I don't see where that's at. Oh, there's Carlos. There's Juan Carlos standing behind Nan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we lost him. Yeah. That's real unfortunate. Are you in that group photo there, Mike? Or I don't know why in the search your name came up. So, oh no, there you'd be right in this photo right here. There's number nine. Yeah, but I'm not there. I uh, need a bigger photo. That uh, was it. That was the. Yeah, it should it, be in that photo. It says 2017. He's gone. Andrew's sick. Yeah. So that would have been 2017, so. Leave one. Yep. That's all right. Yeah, it's tip one for one, man. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I was surprised. I would have thought I would have found more photos of one, but I didn't. Cardiac uh, arrest, eh? Heart attack, huh? I wasn't in the Oh, there's a. Uh... Yeah, Jack. Yeah. Who's that in the, beside you? Uh, well, they can hear everything. That's uh, Danny Bora. Hi, how you doing? I'm Danny. <laughs> this is my, my wife right here. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, man. You can get out uh, of the street. Gone. We ain't scared. She's, she's drinking her nap. <laughs> here, I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, there he is. Mm -hmm. Here's to you, buddy. Oh, how old were you? I know, probably mid sixties. I'm guessing, maybe early seventies. Uh, you're older than me, sixty-seven. Yeah, yeah, right in there. Uh, he's going to take yeah. over the uh, world world convention now. He pretty much. Ran yeah, I don't know. Thing. It's going to be a tough seat to fill. Keith can step up. Not you, Keith Bennett. Yeah, Keith Bennett would be a good candidate for that. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be he doesn't cool. exactly look like the uh, the picture of health either, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he doesn't drink, which helps him, I'm sure. I like the rest of us. Yeah, I, I was shocked, man. There was only three images of Juan Carlos. And one mm -hmm. of them was his Hall of Fame. So it's a real shame. When you search, do you have to have his middle name in there? Will it show up? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying a couple of different searches, but no, they all come up the same. So 2016 was one of his convention displays, and then the Denver Wright Hall of Fame nominee in 2016. Yeah, he had displays in every convention. There's no way it's... I know. I, I don't know. There's something wrong with the search. Well, 
I was told that uh, the way that uh, Randy built it, he actually they had to build the searches for it to go look for those certain types of words or something like that. So it wasn't All right. it wasn't automatic. So it's not like uh, you know you can do a pull up the PDF and then just do a F you know control F and find it. It's stupid technology. It it ruins everything. And it's amazing, isn't it? It's unfortunate. Ted, man, you you've been quiet all night. You look like you're sitting in a closet. You don't you, you're kind of quiet there, Ted. What's up? Not much. Okay, how's life for you? <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, I was wondering there for a minute. I had never seen a dead guy sit up before. Play <laughs> <laughs> the ball game. Yeah. <laughs> Ted, who won the ball game? I don't think we did. Oh, shit. We. West Virginia. Oh, West Virginia. So what else you want me to find here, Danny? Or just find pictures, old pictures. Okay. Search pictures, right. Let's see. Find, a, find us without gray hair. Yeah. <laughs> find, find me with yeah. hair. Yeah. Or with hair. You hear everything. When I was working? Oh, I, I, like the, I like the time. Maybe. This is a great one. Steve mm. Pulaski came oh. home from an ECPA convention that I missed. So he's giving me a rundown of everything that happened all week long. He says, you know, I was talking to the fat guy. I said, Whoa, you got to be a little more specific than that in this, in this hobby. I can't say that. So I started asking him fat people. And I got to about 20 of them. And I said, Steve, who are you, who are you talking to? He said, I'm a fat guy from, from Massachusetts. I said, I can't think of his name. Uh, Coming to you. You got it. So he says, Yeah, that's him. And I said, Well, he's overweight, but he's not the fat guy. <laughs> that the fat guy. Oh, more tone time. Ron Mormon has his own private story. Dantain chapter. Who's got the background noise right now? I think it's me. I don't know. I did a search for Hardy and it showed this page. I don't know why. There's a Robert, Robert, Hardy. Robert, Robert Hardy. Hardy. Oh, that's why. I did I didn't do the full name there. So well, I have a question. What what was the reason that Ron missed the first cam venture? This didn't go. He was supposed, he was supposed to go with um his buddy there from Denver and didn't. Yeah, McCoy. Yeah, McCoy. Yeah, he was supposed to go with McCoy and backed out at the last minute because he was like. Ron, Ron had a, a ticket to Australia, and he went to Australia instead. Oh, that makes sense. And he says he says every. Yeah, Ron went to Australia. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade that for the world or something like that. But I think deep down he wishes he had been. Oh, yeah. Dickie said the same thing. He's 344. He goes, I could have went, but I didn't. For whatever reason. There's a picture of Don with, with your son, huh? Yeah, that's Brandon. My young Is that son. the one getting married next year or what? Well, that's the one that passed away. That's yeah. Brandon. Oh, Brandon, okay. yeah. Jeez. That's uh, Rich. Back when we were that back when we had our partnership going. We were ace in hand. <laughs> Or if too many beers, it was dick in hand. Depending <laughs> 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 how late it was. <laughs> Guys, the other day I was looking around. I found these bottles of Goble Extract. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Anybody interested in those? Oh, no. They're full. Are they Mike free? <laughs> Danny, it should, be, should go to Michigan. <laughs> 
If they're free, I'll take them. If they're worth money, Don will take them. There you go. <laughs> Mike Moon collects uh, all the malt <laughs> stuff, if I'm not mistaken. I know he's. he's Who a, does? He's, Mike Moon. Moon. Mike Moon. Yeah, he lives in Florida. That's cool. That's a cool bottle. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, actually, Mike's is actually, is, I think he's in Facebook jail right now, but <laughs> he's uh, he's doing 30 days uh, the hard way. <laughs> and uh, but he's, he's up uh, visiting Matt up in New York right now. At least he was. But yeah, 30, 30 days in the slammer for Mike. There don't you ask, go. Don't ask me why. Oh, because I don't know, <laughs> but it's, I'm sure it was a doozy. Probably some political <laughs> getting too close to the election, and Facebook probably said, "Yeah, well, who knows? You know, it could be in one of the uh, the offshoot groups. Um, I think Don knows about that, but uh, yeah. um, like I say, it's uh, um, it who nice knows? Guy. But like I say, he's doing 30 days. So, hey, blow that picture up, will you? Yep, let's block this." Display. That's Joe Beth Shields. I remember her name, but I don't. I can't place her now. Oh, look at that! Wow. Beth Shields. That would have been eighty-four. That was in uh, eighty-three. 83, Houston. Houston. 83. Yeah, that's sweet, huh? What, uh, what, what issue is that from? That, that's the November, December, 1983 edition. November, December, 83. All right, I wrote that down. I want to look at that. That's cool. Nice instruction in that. Oh, there's another uh, tow time chapter photo. There's a lot of us there. Yeah, that's that's when you had a whole bunch. And, and they had to glue a picture in the back there. Yeah. <laughs> Is that you, Mike? No, I'm up next to the picture. Excellent. Yeah, just to the right. Oh, of yeah. It. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. Blackbeard yeah, glasses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I used to have black hair. <laughs> Didn't we all? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we all did. Some of us, some people used to have hair, Keith. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know the shine. I should have put something on it, but I ran out of shit and all that. Post chapter. You need to buy you one of those laser hats. Yeah. So there's uh, the Playboy chapter. On Jones. No, that's board members on the right, I think. Yeah, it's board members and the officers on the right. That's the uh, first convention attendees. Here's this is the host here. Yep. Yeah, these are all first timers. All first timers, yeah. Gillies, remember that? Gillies. There's little Just John. Gillies. Fredrickson. Yeah. John Fredrickson. Yeah, this this John. She's he's gone too. Jeez. Yep. Yeah. Now. Arnie Schmidt was that one guy from Wisconsin. That must be a New Jersey thing. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you guess? <laughs> I'm Dane. He's Texas. Hey, hey Mike, I, I put a link to that. Is uh, it? Video the the nineteen the, you know the first convention video I put a link to it in the in the chat along the bottom of the, thank you yeah you can thank you very the, much yeah it's really neat 
it starts out. I mean, I don't know what that whole video is. It was found. Well, I, I think Budweiser yeah. paid for some of the, the the video. Yeah. So, like the first oh. part looks like it's supposed to be a commercial. There's no sound. That's what sucks. Yeah. Because it looks like it's supposed to be a commercial for Budweiser or Bush. Oh, and then Harry. during the video, it looks like they're they're doing different angles for a, a commercial. It, it's really an odd deal, but yeah. it's. It's interesting pose there. With that. One. It's crazy. Yeah, Denver Wright had a connection with Anheuser Busch. Denver Wright number one. And, and so he actually got Anheuser Busch to make a can for us. Yeah. Well they're there and there's, one. Like, like I said, when you watch the video, there there's you know, Denver sitting there drinking that bush can, and then but there's uh, other parts where like they're opening it up and then pouring it into a glass and they do it like five or six times in a row like mm -hmm. they're getting different angles of it it's, it's, a, it's an odd video the way you, when you watch it it had a commercial effect like they were yeah. trying to advertise mm. but it's really cool because it's it it's it's convention one you know Dolly going to kansas city or what's Schwartz, Tully, Henderson, and Hall? Kid Hall, yep. Yeah. Kid Hall? I nailed them all. Ah. El Leaker in the back there. Yeah. Kid Hall loved to play cribbage. Yep. This is Kansas City, I think. Conventions, right? because they weren't going to have his cribbage corner there anymore. Yeah, he loved to play cribbage. Oh, banquet. there you go. 2,000 of them. 2,000 at the Saturday Night Banquet. Holy crap. Look at, look at the train floors. Mm. Yeah, those... Unbelievable. There's Lou. Yeah. Well, I don't remember much from my first convention. Nice. Mine was 1990. New Jersey. Ma Ma was Hershey in nineteen eighty. And, and that was my first one as well. And and that's where I ran into some guys from a chapter called the Jersey Shore chapter. <laughs> and and I've regretted it ever since. That that, <laughs> that regretted that, it ever since. I, I met Joe Radman, <clears throat> Joe Germino. Um I think the were the Masios in that? Yep. Uh, but, but uh, Masio. Bud Bud, Bud Bud was there. And anyway, I, I couldn't afford the room rates at the hotel, so I slept in my truck. And I think I might have got six or eight hours of sleep in the three days that I was there. Um, I bathed in the hot tub because we spent, we spent <laughs> half, the, half the night in the hot tub. So I didn't have to bathe. What the hell? You, you, know, you go to a convention, you damn sure don't have to bathe. But uh, yeah, that's when I met the, the the guys from the Jersey Shore chapter. And it was it was fun, but it was all blur. Which one is this? This is seventy uh, six. That's uh, Philly. Yeah, oh, Philly. Yeah. Here's a tidbit for you. Hmm. Marsha Majors. You mentioned Bud Mazio. Bud. Mazio's brother was right. Dominic Mazio. Right. Mm -hmm. And Dominic Mazio is a professional caddy for Fuzzy Zola. Really? Yeah. Oh. Back when we used to have a And a very good golfer in his own right. Yeah. Yeah, we we actually the Mazios used to go to the old deposit shows. And one of the things that we did back then, um, you know, anybody that's ever been to Deposit, I know you've been there, Jack. Um, it always rained. Always rained during Deposit. Just guaranteed. Anyway, one year we ran out of firewood. So what's the next best thing to burn when you're at a picnic grounds is a picnic table. <laughs> so, so needless to say, we, we, that never went good, you know, over very well with the uh, owner of Guestwood Ho. But uh, everybody was all drunk up, and 
singing, having a good old time. And every time we needed more wood on the fire, somebody just kept saying, let's throw another Mazio on the fire. <laughs> and uh, that's how we kept the fires burning that night was we, I think we burned two picnic tables. Uh. And uh, like I say, it didn't go over very well, but my God. We Tyler. Had a good time. I like the. Uh, I like the. Uh... Bob Trey. What was the guy's name? He was one of your Baltimore guys that got married there that year. Glenn Adams. Lou Capriati. Glenn, Glenn Adams. Right. Glenn and Mary Adams. And uh, Mary, yeah. Right. They're, they're still together. They uh, they had moved out to Vegas for a while. They're still together, but those two aren't. Oh, missed. You took the picture away. Sorry, I'll go back. That was George, George and uh, Marie Miller. George is now married to Dale. Oh Thank yeah. You. Yep. Capriati. Hmm. And Lou Capriati. Still a member. He never comes to yeah. anything. Well, he's he's still he's still active in the Chicago area at times. He goes to the Bullfrog shows. Quite a bit. I just so saw went, him months ago. Went to like the, uh, the Michigan convention because he uh, showed up. We had Gangster Night for our theme that year. And he showed up as a as a uh, a leg a leg breaker from the mob. He had a baseball bat. And <laughs> Who Lou? Yeah, Lou looked like, like he was. Uh, a, Lou, Lou goes to the. Um, or something. Who goes to the Title Town show every year up there in uh, Green Bay? And at the hotel, the restaurant at the hotel, they had ladies' night where girl, women, and if you wore a dress, you got to drink for free. Lou went to a store and bought a dress so he could drink for free. <laughs> <laughs> but at least he hasn't he hasn't gone the whole way. No, like. Uh, like Steve Wiltshire did, and uh, and uh, Joe Potsiadlik of Jersey Shore. <laughs> oh, they're now Amy and and uh, Amy, yeah. Steve Wiltshire and uh, else? Joe Potts is Linda, Linda Jack. Linda, Linda, Linda Pods. Hmm. I love I love at the uh, the Omaha convention the night that the uh, pros uh, came into the uh, hospitality after it was all over that night and thought they were taking on a bunch of bunch of old white guys and they got taken out by a few of our members including Amy Wiltshire who took down two of them with their thumbs. He had one in each, one in each hand. One in each, one in each throat. <laughs> Alapri is saying, "Imagine those guys after that, trying to live that down." There's a guy who uh, had had one of them on the ground. Was reading him his rights. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> so Al was saying, "Yeah." He was taken down by an old white woman, an ugly old white woman. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that ugly one? On, Jim, did you drink that third one yet? I'm sorry? Did you drink your third beer yet? Oh, cramity. Karen's come down and cleaned up the mess twice. I, I left there and went. It's <laughs> tontines again, yeah. So, Mike, that looks like you sitting right in the very middle, isn't it? Right there in the middle. I yeah. got something in my hand. I don't know what it is. Well, it, it looks like scary. Keith wants to grab it out of your hand, though. Maybe it was yeah, a, Keith, yeah, yeah. probably yeah. a communion wafer or something. Yeah. Whatever it was, Keith Arline wanted to grab it. it looks what like. year is that? That's uh, 84. 84, okay. Yeah. Very beard chip. There's the Playboy Club. 84 was Cedar Rapids. Oh, there's uh, Martin Landy. Yeah, Martin Landy in the back there, eh? 
He still shows up. He shows up at uh, Blue Gray every year. Dickie in the middle. Does he? Yeah. yeah. Shows up at Spring John Batter right next to Dickie too. Yeah. I see him every year at uh, at Blue Gray. He's always looking for coasters. <laughs> That's his thing now. He's just as he's just as crazy with coasters as he used to be with cans. Yep. Jack, were you at Cedar Rapids? Yeah. That's when that, the the hotel had the that looks like fire alarm, the fire alarm that went off, and we all had to yeah. evacuate the hotel. Oh yeah. Running down the stairs at like one in the morning, and turned out they had a halon system, and it just made the halls fill with the halon smoke, and everybody thought it was fire smoke, but it wasn't. It was the. Hey. I think was, I think actually one of our collectors started a fire in a garbage can that made the halon system go. <laughs> was, you, that was, the, was, was you burning the picnic table? <laughs> what me? <laughs> It was probably burning one of the uh, room's uh, couches or chairs or something. I think it was Rich Laheka and Larry Kleins. Those two, go, those two were characters. Mm. <laughs> at, the, uh, at the convention in Milwaukee. Which so one? Be like, the first not one? Not the Playboy Club, the second one. So it'd be like, I don't know, three, four. In any case, um, the first I was one rooming was, with. Uh, the first one was in 78. Okay, 78. Milwaukee, Milwaukee, 78, yeah. So I'm rooming with my buddy Kurt Wyckoff. And I had to do some work or something. So Wyckoff checks in to the hotel under my name. And gets the room. And then when I get there, I call up, use a house phone and say, give me the room for my Kilibrin. And they put me in. And then I cough and tell me what room I'm in, okay? So we go up there. And there's this big, vast room. And it was a suite. And so we've got this suite. And we're having a party. It's got a, a counter. And it's got a, a refrigerator. And there must be 25 people in this room. So then it gets to be like one, two o'clock in the morning. It's time to go to bed. And we boot everybody out. And I said, uh, Wyckoff, uh, where's the beds? And he only got the sitting room for the suite. We had no bed. <laughs> there was no beds. Well, you had the floor. Old, we just got the sitting room for the suite. <laughs> or you pull, pull a couch or a, or a chair. Yeah, you had a couch. You had a no. It didn't pull out and make a bed. So you just had this chair, and the, and you slept on the floor or something. You know, I mean, that was it. I think there was a blanket in the closet or something, but there was no beds in this place. <laughs> we just had beer the city room. And there was no shower. There was just a little bathroom with a you know with a commode and a sink. There was no shower. It was the second <laughs> week. What the hell? Yeah, but it was a fun time. <laughs> well, that's a lot of goodies. Joe Olson, huh? Yeah. Well, Joe. Kicked Ron Kitka. That's a name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Marcia. a name, all right. Marcia. <clears throat> what year is oh, this? She was she was a man. This Beer can that year was a babe. Now it's McClure. McClure. Mm. Mm. Oh, Jerry, Weish Jerry Weishire must have went home early that year. 85. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he doing up there in the picture? 
85, this is Orlando. There you go. Oh, Orlando. <laughs> Keep that picture up there. <laughs> no, I can't. All right. Forget about that. Okay, cancel that idea. <laughs> <laughs> First timers. <coughs> There's E.L. Porsche. He's he fell out of the Playboy Club. He's another one that only collects full cans. Who's that? E.L. Porsche. E. Yeah, in the back yeah. row. He only collects full cans. The, doesn't he now I don't want to get out of line here but doesn't he drink the can and then save the empty no he keeps one full one for his collection but he drinks all the rest of them a lot of them okay <laughs> all right a lot he's in Chicago I see him every once in a while go back yeah. up just a little bit Keith who's 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 in the bathtub that's um Lou Capriati again and not who sure which Gary that is. Is that McGuire? Yeah, that's McGuire. Yeah, that's McGuire. yeah that's who I thought it was. Tom Hall. That's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> Who's making noise? Not me. Some, sounds like somebody snoring. Is somebody yeah. snoring or <laughs> which convention is this? Florida, eighty five. Yeah, still, still, still eighty five. Okay. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. look at the palm trees, eh? Yeah, I joined in 89. My first one was 90, so that's all history to me, all those ones. Probably weren't old enough to drink then. Jim, what's your first? Romine. Uh, 87, Niagara. Niagara? Right. Yeah, Nine, we... Uh, minus <laughs> 75. I actually joined in 74 in my first magazine. They wanted me to go to Denver. And I said, I just joined this club. Now they want me to go to Denver. <laughs> How about a yeah, show in Chicago? <laughs> Ni Niagara was weird because there was like three hotels all in a row. And then yeah. the, the convention was in a separate building beside one of the hotels. All right. And right. so... So we literally loaded our stuff into the car and drove it over to the convention hall. <laughs> load into the convention hall for the show. And so that was a long time ago. And we were, we were finding ways to alter our perceptions all the time then. And so Art Zerby and I, went out to the guy, John Krupnik's car to partake of some fun. <laughs> and That's an illegal uh, herb. So we cut off away. his car alarm while we were lighting up. And so I said to Art, just stay here. I'll go get John to turn the alarm off. <laughs> So Art, Art Zerby is in the car full of smoke. It's a Cheech and Chong moment. <laughs> and the alarm's going off in a parking lot full of cars full of beer cans. 
And so I got back and we got the alarm turned off. And so then we were right back to what we were doing. <laughs> when did the uh, magazine go to like full color? Jeff Berg, Jeff Berg, Char's first husband. Oh, Chad. The Niagara Falls convention, there was a quite an issue there because Bob Trey was the convention chairman and he he blocked like fifty rooms for his friends or something. And we had we were all we were in the three different hotels because a lot of his friends were where the convention was. That didn't go over too well. Mm. And things got changed after that, that there was no more blocking for friends. There's a picture of Rainer. There's Rainer on the right, right there, wearing a bow hat. Oh, yeah. It's John Conrad. Yeah. <coughs> This is cool. <laughs> oh, the pig. Dick Johnson. Oh, yes. When Jersey Shore did their first, uh, the first, uh, was that the 90, 90, this is 86. Video, yeah, they did the video. Frankie Barranco was this is uh, narrating. Oh, it's Wyckoff yeah. and me. Dave Ollendorf. Get that jacket on Bill Christensen. <laughs> we need to build a history page on the on the website, Keith. Oh, that was a picture of the uh, um, Scotch drinkers. Oh, yeah, right. that's right. They said go to one that. year. They yeah. Said, What's that, Jack? I used, I used to go to that thing, but I never could stand the Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> so one year, I chugged the five offerings. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah, that stuff's really here. Grace says to me, if you're not going to do it seriously, why do you come? I said, just to piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> the next year, I took the five, the five scotches and mixed them and drank it down. Ooh. He said, that's it. You're, you're finished. It's a good The Trillium chapter from Toronto. There you go. Just my, put the uh, Trillium back out there. Right. See if my brother. Yeah, you should have your in laws there, right? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for Dougie. Yeah, Dougie's there on the right hand side, looks like. Wearing the horns. With, with the horns? Yeah. yeah. Later. That number nine in the back in the middle, though? Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah, he was, he was born in Canada. Oh, number, all right. Number nine goes uh, goes to uh, a lot of the Trillium chapter meetings, or not meetings, but trades. Uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll see him up there when I'm in there in October every year. All 
This is, this is awesome history lessons. You learn, you're learning stuff. It's cool. It's really, they, the Ron Time chapter. Ron Time. Ron Time. <laughs> they, look, they look curiously well, like Ron Time. There you go. <laughs> we had the uh, we had the Mardi Gras uh, party in uh, in New Orleans. That was a good time. And I took the uh, Ron Mormon mask, and I, I I got dressed up that I didn't have a costume, so I put the Ron Mormon mask on. <laughs> with my glasses over it. And I was wearing my shirt that I'd gotten down on Bourbon Street. Uh, what did it say? Uh, of course I love you, my dick is hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm wearing the shorts <coughs> and I drew stitch marks on both of my legs. <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm at the, I'm at the, the, uh, the hospitality thing there. Is that Ron's there. Ron Mormon's there. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Don Mormon. I'm Ron's twin brother. Yeah. I didn't like being tall, so I had myself shortened six inches or eight inches, whatever it was. And I had the stitch marks there. I said, oh, but I've got the same opinion of women that my brother has. <laughs> oh, boy. And he's, Jack, do you remember that uh, three piece funny. combo that we acquired off the street oh, yeah. in New Orleans? Yeah. Yeah, it took them took them up to uh one fella had a tuba. Yeah. He had a tuba and we kept calling for a tuba solo. We finally got one. <laughs> a tuba solo. <laughs> it fit right in at the time. Yeah, it's a tuba solo. Yeah. Fit right in at the time. Yeah, we, we hired we hired them after the hospitality. And they, they, they came with us up, up to uh, Bradman and uh, Oleski's room, knocked on the door. They were already in bed. They got out of bed. They opened the door and walked these guys playing the tuba and clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slide called. trombone. Slide trombone. <laughs> yeah. And a horn. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It can't be too much longer that the magazine goes all color because I don't remember it being in black and white. Yeah, this this was eighty seven, so I mean I joined in eighty nine. I just don't remember it being in black and white. It wasn't until Marsha Butterbuck. Wait a minute, back up to the bar tourist song, uh, picture. Uh, hang on. Sorry, man. Close it too early. Which one do you want? Well, we got color now. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the front oh, there page you go. color. You had a picture of the bar tourist there for a minute. Hang on. He's He's way at the end. Yeah. It was... Getting close. Well, I passed it. You think you passed it again, yeah. Go to the bottom of that page. There you go. Oh, there, there, there it is. There's, there's the board. There's Jack right in the middle. There I am. I can there see you him. are, Jack, with a bottle in his hand. Who else I is there? I see Brian. There? I'm in there somewhere, I'm sure. You're probably there. I don't know where you are. Oh, there's, that's, that was the chick that was with Brian. <laughs> Everybody was, uh, everybody was uh, checking out her, uh, her what, what she had under her top there. Yeah, you know, happens. But uh, ah, the times you had. Oh God. So now we move to eighty-eight. All right. Eighty-eight would be Grand Rapids. The uh, <clears throat> we had a weird thing at the Hershey convention. I was with Ed and Bob Hahn sharing a room and we were out and drinking and went back about maybe like midnight and went back to bed, all hung over, going back to sleep. And then they started playing in the hallway music and uh, band, you know, guitars, 
going like crazy and just a huge crowd. And we heard this noise and we didn't want to open the door. So we crawled out the window and walked around to come in the hallway. Patrick. That was, that was the convention, Don, when we, uh, there's about 50. Oh, Grand Rapids. Yeah. Dan this Andrews was, was still convention. playing, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. About 50 of us in Lasutzen's room. Yeah. And President and, Ford, President and, Ford stayed in his hotel that weekend. He and did. The, so that's the, Mike. Uh, Mike, that's you hiding behind the bush there on the left. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, because they all want to kill him because he's yep. the youngest. They did, so I had to hide. Hiding for his own protection, yeah. There's 30 of you left then. Yeah. At the one in Grand Rapids, and you mentioned yeah. that the president there was I going am. down the street. I should be in that first so, picture. Oh, yeah, there's Mr. McDougal. Yeah. Picture here be a BSCA, Katie some brews and Christmas. we had a uh, we had a little balcony in our room and so we're looking out the balcony and and out on the street is the uh, motorcade for the president and we're standing there look we got a beer in our hand we're looking over the balcony and the motorcade's going by and the next thing i know the door to my room opens up and these Wait, two men in suits are standing there and they said Come away from the balcony now. <laughs> <laughs> it was the secret service. They said, get off the balcony <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. All right. You don't argue with him. Oh, there's Don. Okay. Yeah, I pulled up that picture earlier. Yeah, same picture. <clears throat> I had to bring him to the convention because uh, that's Dave Van Hyn in the middle on that picture, I bet. Yep. Yeah. Oh, here he is. And John Krupnik. I had to bring Brandon to that convention because Celeste was due any day now. Oh. <laughs> Did her a favor by keeping one of the <laughs> Look how lean and mean John Krupnik was. Mm -hmm. there. Okay, no shit. Half the size he is now. Yep. Well, he's lost a lot of weight lately. Oh, really? That's good. Good. Oh, yeah. John, John Finan with a little hair. Oh, little yeah. Rex. Little John again. Jersey Shore Radman, hospitality. A young, young Radman, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's when, that's when we had all the balloons with the, uh, the helium balloons. And at the end of the night, we let them out into the uh, lobby, and they all floated up to the ceiling of the lobby. <laughs> and the hotel didn't know how to get them down from there. <laughs> Easy. Just shoot them all. <laughs> There's Dick. His Stroh's with his Stroh's suit. Yeah. This, I, bet uh, you, I bet you next uh, year's are all in color. there. Jim Patapa. I remember him from years back and he's still in the roster but see him at the convention anymore. See that guy every year. There's Mr. Vetter. <laughs> Green Blatt. Green Blatt. <laughs> Yeah. Sure, yeah. Carl Cavill. There's Nan. <laughs> Doing a rusty bunch dump. dump. Is 
So what was 89? Was that Columbus? Yeah. Yeah. See, it's like I joined a, a year and a half too late. I missed Grand Rapids and Columbus. Right. You know, both three hour drives for me. Oh, yeah. So I drove nine hours to Jersey for my first <laughs> Well, I, I drove the nine hours the other direction the uh, two years before. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, guys, can I add a couple of memories for Grand Rapids? Sure. Sure. So, so that was my first convention. Um, I roomed with Kip Rodier and Nick oh, Johnson. Yeah, that. Yeah. And um, you were talking about the secret really? service. If I remember the story right, that's the one that Mark Barron got off on the wrong, wrong floor, and he met Secret Service agents, guns drawn. Oh, God. oh yeah. <coughs> and and the other thing that's, that jumps out at me, or that I really remember from Grand Rapids, besides my first convention and seeing so many things and meeting people, was, you remember the con convention hall? They had, um, on one of the levels... They had the, the local super, supermarket chain was having some kind of big expo. So if you were going to an event at the convention center, you got to go in there. So all the food, we kept all going back food. for runs and having samples of all the food. And we ate pretty well at that convention. <laughs> yeah, Phil, obviously that was my first convention too. And yeah, eating free. Yeah, right. that, that convention was great. Right. <laughs> kind of thing I didn't even realize was going on. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how you can be, be at a place like that and not know everything that's happened. Yeah. Hanging out yeah, with my there buddy. was some good food in there, wasn't there? It was. <laughs> I remember yeah. that. Very tasty. Free, that was the main thing. <laughs> that was matter if it was tasty or not. It was we're free. All spending too much, we were all spending too much money on beer. The free food was good. Or that Grand Rapids, that was the one that had the big, the, the monstrous security guy. And, uh, Here we go. Here we go. That, this is my first one. Jack, maybe you can answer this question. I I, uh, I gave everybody their rooms there. Jack, when, when did the uh, age-old tradition of the uh, Jersey Shore chapter at Camp Vention of the mooning start? Well, it was long before then because uh, hey, Joe. those guys those guys were mooning. I wasn't even involved in that chapter. Uh, Here's Jim Cook and Joe Germino. Yep. What what year did they have the convention in Jersey? Ninety. Right there, right, you right there. there. The micro night at Jersey. Okay, so I'm you know Jim Cook. Eighty nine is when they. So Eighty nine was uh, was Columbus. Is when they all got on the stage and they moon and they had a. On each oh. cheek, it spelled it out. N E W. That was in Orlando, in oh, '85. Right. They, they decided they were going to try for for '90, and so they all got up there and mooned and had '90 in I N and the next guy's cheeks. Newark, N E W A R K, N J. And that was their moon shot. <laughs> yeah, it must have been 12, 15 I'm on the stage. Yeah, yeah. There's Jack right there in the middle. Right in the there's, middle. there's the Bartor crowd. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Bartor. And, and, Bartua. and there, was, there was a character. This is his name uh, from, from Oklahoma. Jerry Brewer. I never saw Jerry Brewer sober. He was drunk from the Moment he got there. Hey, nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with that? You remember the the the, uh, the classic Jack car the show? There, there's a classic car show, and like there's Bill and Cheryl thirty years ago. John Finan and 
And Jack with a bucket on his head. They're from the magazine. Oh, the that's Ken not Benson me with pictures. the bucket. That's, oh, it's that's not. A, that's not me. That's that's the guy from uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, oh, Gajewski. Al Gajewski. Oh, what was? It? Yeah, he was he was a Polish guy. Yeah. Looks like Rainier. Yeah, right before our convention, there was a classic car show, and Bowser from Sha Na Na was at that classic car show. Holy shit. But, Dan, you remember the highlight of the classic car show, right? I may not. <laughs> Jim Dixon's car. Jim Dixon put his oh, car. Yeah. He could have put it there, <laughs> too. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and Kirk put his pop up camper VW the pop -up van. Camper. <laughs> With the shredded top. Hey, Phil. Oh, my God. Grand Rap. <laughs> <laughs> There's you and Nick. These are all the cans that we picked up at Grand Rapids and brought home. I mean, we, we actually left hundreds of cans in the room. Yeah, you remember we must have got, there must have been a, at least a thousand aluminum cans. Remember, we left the room with. We couldn't take them all. We just stacked exactly. them all up. Oh my god! Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> the luxury coming in. Yep. I didn't go to this one. Clara, there, but I don't remember it. We were yeah. up in, up in uh, near Ascoda and in Tawas area. We yeah, had a Michigan guys that didn't go to Santa Clara go dumping up that weekend. <laughs> you you mentioned that uh, VW van a couple of times that Wyckoff and I had. Yeah. That Wyckoff had. So Wyckoff says to me, he calls me up. He lives in Kansas. He calls me up. He says, how are you getting to California? I said, I'm going to go to O'Hare Airport, get on an airplane, fly out there. I'll be there in four hours. Bad idea. Bad idea. Fly to Kansas City. I'll pick you up. We'll drive to California. We drove <laughs> that VW van all the way to Santa Clara and back. Well, and the starter were... motor went out. You had to push it every single time to start it it popped a clutch <laughs> popped a clutch <laughs> if i recall before he came to dearborn with it didn't you guys go to pittsburgh so you could get a keg of iron city we did yeah <laughs> and then we ended up in uh, dearborn yeah because i true. drank out of that keg of iron city up there that's true yeah we did that Many miles, God, that was so many miles and so few cans. There you go. You guys did the uh, opposite of uh, Martin Landy's old uh, theory was, uh, holy crow, Leslie Cady was in the magazine. Shit. His wife, she never showed up for a convention. We, uh, Martin Landy always had a thing that he, uh, would want to go home with more cans than the miles he drove. Show or, uh, convention or something like that. <laughs> you guys must have done the other way around. Fewest, fewest cans per mile. Yeah. Well, folks, I'm going to call it a night. So I'll see well, you. It's sure been a great time. I'll see you. Have a seat. Thank you. I'll Thank see y'all online on Facebook and. Uh, Bill, have a safe, have a safe, safe trip home. Have a good one, man. <laughs> All right, take be care. good, Bill. Thanks for everything you do, man. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Take care, Bill. All right, bye. -bye. Thanks, guys. Go long. I'm going to run also, but...
It's good talking with you guys. Thank well, you I'm, so glad, much. I'm, I'm glad you made it, Mike. Yes, take care. Thanks for the story. All right, Mickey, take, take it easy. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye. Get down the line somewhere. And they got out of the elevator. Secret Service agents got strong. Yeah, who's got like a